Lisa G has some headlines. Come on in, Lisa. Let's get those real quick. And then I do want to play a phony phone call and get Lisa it. Glassberg takes shits at work. Lisa, what do you have for us quickly on the uh, rundown of the Howard 100 News? A a lot of good stuff. An exclusive coming soon to Howard Stern fans via Vinny Favalli, vice president of CBS Late Night Programming East Coast. He has agreed to release parts of the video of his infamous Debbie tapes to Howard TV for an upcoming episode. Oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. Vinny, thank you. Good seeing Vinny over at Letterman on Wednesday. uh, How is Vinny? Uh, keeping the weight off, but he, I detected maybe he put a few pounds back, <laughs> which which is good. Who wants a disciplined Vinny? Hello, my Debbie. <laughs> All I can tell you is, for those of you who have Howard TV, you are in for a treat. I have seen the Debbie tapes. See, I've never you, seen the video. I love you, Bambino. They mm-hmm. are fucking crazy. <laughs> I there don't think is. I've hey, seen Take a look. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Look at a little Vinny. Three in the morning. I love you. Oh, I love you so much. You know? Oh, God. It's sometimes at the end of the day, I feel like, like I just haven't had enough of you, you know. And Isn't I, the visual great? I just can't wait to work it's together. It's creepier than it's just listening to wait, the audience. Wait, what? Wait till you see when they pan when Three, he pans down. He's in his underwear. What? Put, go, go keep going where he gets into his underwear and they start scratching his balls. Hello, that's my all he gave us. Oh, that's all he gave you? Oh. Yeah, that's it. Thirty seconds. That's all. That's it. Uh, that's better than nothing, but. I need more. If they give, like, Rob, one of the funniest things is he takes Debbie on a tour of the apartment and uh-huh. a tour of Brooklyn. And that's funny. <laughs> isn't he going to give us that? The tours? He gave us the, when we did this, Howard, I sat with him and he gave me the audio, but he told me I could never have the video. So I think he only approved a 30 second clip. Oh. Because he thinks he looks good. You know what? He looks like a guy who would shoot a congresswoman. It looks like the <laughs> making of a serial killer. Yeah. He looks like a guy <laughs> who, you know, would go to the Gabby Giffords thing. And, oh, there he is. It's Vinny, portrait of a serial killer. Yeah, look at him. Oh. And that's Debbie, huh? That's Debbie. Oh, she's some hot tomato. Yeah. No yeah. wonder. Mwah. He has the Mwah. same glasses, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, Never Debbie. <laughs> Debbie. Hello, my Debbie. Oh, <laughs> oh Debbie. I love you. Mwah. I love you, Bambina. When you come to New York, all of this will be yours. He's living in a fucking dump. <laughs> <laughs> By the I'm way, scratching my balls, I caught myself. I won't do it again. I love you. Mm-hmm. I'll save that for you. This hand. No. You can scratch See, my balls. See now that I'm not biting my nails. <laughs> Every I have girl's find dream. My hands to do. And oh, if you were here, you would benefit from that oh so much. Oh wow! But a man in love. <laughs> Oh, my Debbie. <laughs> I can't. At the end of the day, I haven't had enough of you. Oh, my Debbie. <laughs> oh, if you were here, you would benefit oh so much from me scratching my balls. <laughs> Moving on. I'll uh, save that for you. I'm going to pause one minute to uh, change my clothes. And actually, not change my clothes. Put on some clothes. You know why? I'm not dressed now. Look, look this is oh. where I'm Hold on a second. Look at this. By now, you've seen this shot before, so this is not going to shock you, but I'll give you another glimpse of my bot. Hold on. Oh. What's to come? Oh. Oh, second. What's to come? A shot of my bot. Yeah, right? he's so hot. And he's like four feet tall. <laughs> is still in like stubby legs. Hairy. Head, the crucial head. Um, oh, okay. Crucial Head. I forgot about Crucial, crucial head. head. That's the name of my band, by the way. That's If anyone wants to know the origin of it. Yeah. Crucial Head okay, Productions. <laughs> That's not the Crucial Head, There's my, my Debbie. Look at my ass. Look at my ass. ass. <laughs> my <laughs> ass. You know Debbie girls love looking at a guy's ass. Too All right, I I can hardly hear it. You know what? (laughs) That is, I mean, he's every congressperson, you know, who's ever sent a picture of themselves by telephone to a girl. Yes? Hello, my Debbie. Call my fucking house, you dumb motherfuckers. I got the fucking train on this fucking line. No, I know what the fuck this is, you fucking piece of fucking stolen bastard. You don't fuck me? I love you. No! You know what? You're not got my fucking (laughs) number now, you I love you, my darling. Mwah. Who the f- You fire! You think I'm gonna not fire? Who the fuck you are, you fucking bastard? <laughs> I promise I will try not to scratch my balls, but I'm definitely not biting my nails. I don't believe you if you do it. I love you so much, Debbie. Yeah, you love me, you fucking Get the fuck out of here, you sick fucking bastard. Right, get off. Well, uh, here's the catch. Yeah. 
He says he's only releasing part of the video and <laughs> hopes to sell the entire video to raise money for his oh, musical. We oh. have to buy it. Yeah. We just want it for free. How much money is he looking for? I think that, hey, Doug, that might be worth purchasing. It is brilliant. I, it, it's a great special. I'll host it. I'll talk to Vinny. I'm going to try to get more. Yeah, he's got to give more. He's got to give, he's, he's got to at least give us the tour of his apartment and the tour of New York City. Of Brooklyn. All right, Brooklyn, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Not even New York City. Oh, Debbie, I just want to show you what Brooklyn looks like where you'll be living. He had uh, one stipulation, Howard. That was to plug his, uh, his show. Of course. All right, so I, go ahead and plug it. I don't know what to say about that uh, fucking show. Yeah, hereaftermusical.com is his, uh, his amazing show. <laughs> nice plug. Hereaftermusical is Vinny's plug. Hereaftermusical.com. Oh, Debbie. <laughs> See, now that I'm not biting my balls, I have to find something for my balls to do. And, oh, if you were here, you would benefit from that oh so much. <laughs> oh, so much. They, a man in love. Have you ever heard a voice like that? Oh, so much. You haven't been loved by a man like that, Robin. No. Uh, I don't think I've loved a woman like that. <laughs> oh, if you were here. It's just like his love voice. Oh, if you were here. He kisses the microphone. Goes, mwah. 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 Oh, oh, if I was a girl, and I'd And then he shit. starts mumbling in that Italian of his. Oh, Maradona, come on. <laughs> Get cooking up in yum. And, oh, my Debbie. You know, I don't think we ever talked to Debbie about the tapes. Yeah, well, Debbie's still in fucking shock. <laughs> <laughs> That's her life. Oh, Debbie. It's sometimes at the end of the day, I feel like like I just haven't had enough of you, you know? And I, <laughs> I just can't wait till we're together. Right. It's Friday, October 26th, 3 a.m. And um, about an hour ago, I finished dubbing all of the home movies for my parents' trip this past summer. Right. I think you. it's a pretty unusual way to start a video. What a self-starter. Uh, I'm scratching my balls. I caught myself. I won't do it again. I love you. Mwah. I'll save that for you. This hand. Ugh. See, now that I'm not biting my nails, I have to find something for my hands to do. And, oh, if you were here, you would benefit from that oh so much. Uh, can you imagine but, that? Uh, I promise. Like I, a spider. I'm trying not to scratch my balls, but I'm definitely not biting my nails. Um, oh. Where was I? I'm starting the tape by saying goodnight. I, I feel so much creativity in my mind right now. I'm going to go to bed. And it'll probably oh, that creativity be never paid off. Sleep because I've got a lot of ideas I want uh, to do for this videotape. If all goes well, this might be <laughs> the best videotape yet. Yeah, it's the you. best for us. I anyway. love you, my Debbie. <laughs> How did she not run okay, away from him? The tape. I plan well, on putting some stuff that I, that I think you'll like. Um, as well How did she not go? This guy is nuts. A look at your he, brand first of all, he had the right girl. He hadn't even met her yet. He just That's talked to her on the phone. That's what I was going to say. I was like, what is the, I forget the trajectory, but I think they didn't meet each other for like a year. Yeah. It was a, they, it was a wrong phone number. <laughs> and this is what uh, it blossomed into. Oh, my Debbie. Debbie now lives in that tape. Like, that's her life. <laughs> oh, Debbie. I'm biting my nails. I'm not biting my nails. I'm thinking about biting my nails. I'm biting my balls. Oh, my God, my balls. I haven't scratched my balls. Oh, if my hands were on you. Oh, Debbie. <laughs> Fuck. He should just, he, he should have just killed himself. <laughs> He's miserable. Oh, my God. Closets. Um... Hmm. Bits and pieces. Like I said, my mind is bubbling. This may be the bubbling. best one yet. It's creativity. I love you, it's 318 now, oh. and I'm going to go to sleep. Next time you see me, oh, it'll be go. Saturday. Don't know what time, but it'll be Saturday. Oh. And uh, we'll be continuing with life. this tape. I love you, my darling. Ciao. You, I'll if, see you tomorrow morning. If you were dating him, wouldn't you kind of be like, what's with this fucking but guy? But you're not dating him. It's a guy you talk to on the phone. Yeah, but wouldn't you be like, what's with all the tapes? Isn't he motivated to go out and get get himself together? He's making this tape. He's cutting the vacation tape for his family. What about a job? Lisa, if a guy ever sent you a tape like that, would you just be mortified? I'd be scared. You'd be scared, right? You would call police. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I thought. Debbie married him from that tape. But do you really wind up in extended conversations with wrong phone numbers? It could never happen to you. Right. <laughs> wow. uh, Debbie, Vinny's wife. Debbie's on the phone? Debbie. Hello, my Debbie. Yep, I'm here. Hello, my Debbie. Hello. 
Hello. What's up? Hello, my Debbie. Um, I guess I'm so I'm calling to defend myself. <laughs> um, I do say I come off like crazy for falling <laughs> in love with <clears throat> a nut. However, I will say that, you know, I don't know, love was, eight, it was different in the 80s, but those tapes were very romantic to me. It's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Well, crazy, however, I had been married to the guy for 27 years. I know. Listen, he's worked out great. And I know Vinny, and Vinny's a great guy. Don't get me wrong. And I mean, it's amazing that you could watch that tape, though. You probably saved him from being a serial killer. uh, That's what I'm thinking. I mean, when a guy sends you a tape of himself in his underwear and talks about scratching his balls and how hot his own ass is and like... I, mean, I don't know what I was thinking back then. I can only tell you that I was a I was a Jewish Southern girl raised in Savannah, Georgia. Moved to Los Angeles, California. Always wanted to marry an Italian guy, and then I got to a point in my life when I didn't even want to get married anymore. And along comes this wacky guy who's so funny, who makes me laugh. I mean, right. Really I know. It's just the tape is a little frightening. I mean, knowing Vinny now, I, I know not to be frightened. But <laughs> back then, if I saw that tape and like you were my daughter, I'd go, "Look, I don't like this guy. I don't like what he's about. I don't like I him sending what? tapes to my daughter in her <laughs> underwear." I didn't like the te- I didn't like the tour of Brooklyn. I hated that, and yeah. I hated. I mean, there's I a million it. things there that should have said to you, "Get the fuck away from this guy." I mean, qu- quite frankly, you're right, especially for a girl that never even cared about getting married. I was living young life, pre-single fun in yeah, LA, and what the heck did I fall in love with? I don't know. All I can tell you is that this guy on that tape, as wacky as he is, made me laugh from the very first time. All right, you don't have to explain to us, Debbie. We know. He's a good guy. All right, no problem. Are you getting worried at all about the amount of money Vinny has invested in that dumb play of his? I mean, are you starting to feel bad about it? Um, For a while, I was really um, nervous, very, I mean, really nervous. But you know what? It's 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 a true endeavor. I mean, it's not it's not a hobby. It's not a game. It's a real thing. Yeah. Well, that's eighty. What is it up to now? I mean, the time I spoke to you was eighty grand. No. Well, let me tell you, the production he's putting on in April is probably I think the budget is one hundred (laughs) and fifty thousand. But he's raised most of the money. I mean, it's very yeah by hitting up his friends. No, no, no friends. <laughs> okay, I don't there, know. There are hey, I got an Howard, email asking me to no buy friends, tickets. No friends from the Howard Stern show. That's, no, that's it's goddamn it's right. Crazy. No friend. No one here is donating. <laughs> well, the only one from the Howard Stern show that kicked in anything on his campaign was Benji. So, um, all right. not all his friends helped. Trust me. All right, um, Debbie. I got to uh, go anyway. Don't worry. We all think you're normal. Oh, thank you. All right, later. Bye. Goodbye. I'd be worried, but we might think she's crazy. <laughs> you know what? The only thing we can say is that we knew Vinny before we heard these tapes. Right. I guess uh, he made $200 million off Facebook, the graffiti guy. Nice. I don't know. We'll bring him in. He has an entourage of about 300 people. We're only going to bring in four. So let me go get them. Follow the camera, guys. Hey, Dave. Hey, how are you? Doing? Doing? What brings you today? What's that? What brings you to the show today? Howard Stern, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest interviewer of all time. Nice. Uh, congratulations on your Facebook thing. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm gonna head right in there. 
My name is David Cho. I'm here to interview Howard Stern today about uh, what it's like to that that same feeling of. Well, let's start it again. Cause you said you're going to interview Howard Stern. <laughs> yeah. You're going to interview. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Go ahead. Start again. Don't fuck with my shit, dude. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm uh, David Cho. Um, I'm here today to interview Howard Stern. I want to ask him what it's that 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 feeling of like going home and going through your pants and then you're like you find that five dollars in your pocket that you didn't know that you had it's like that times 200 million so um, he's a good guy to talk to about that I mean there's not that many people that I can at this point relate to on that level and he's one of them so I came here to ask him some questions about it you want to talk Cho? Do you hear? Yeah. Uh, so you know the story 200 million that he was offered either a few thousand dollars or he was offered a few thousand dollars in stock took the stock, now allegedly worth $200 million. He claims that... 140. I don't know what it is, but... Yeah, yeah. who cares? It's over $100 million. Very good. All right. Um, he said he pleaded with the New York Times not to run the story because he didn't want it to affect his privacy. It's basically ruined his life, he claims. His life is perfect. He had a girlfriend in every town. He could do whatever he wanted. Now he feels like they've taken his freedom privacy. When the story first broke, an old girlfriend called him and said she'd suck his dick every day for $2 million. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, she said he's just really excited to meet you. He's changed his life. He hopes to get advice from you. He listened to the show every day for years. He used to paint to the show. He got super depressed after the arty thing. He said, this is great, too. So he made his first million gambling. You know, basically, he had this system where he would just double up until he hit something. Right. So... He was selling his paintings at like local galleries for two hundred dollars. He's a really struggling painter, and once he hit, you know, made this million dollars, he goes, "I don't really have to sell my art to live anymore, so I'm just going to charge whatever the fuck I want." So he started charging ten thousand dollars a painting, and he's like, "Well, of course, people started to take notice after that, and uh, you know, it just continued to increase, increase, increase." Last year, he sold one painting for five hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, he doesn't own a house. He says he gave his parents a mansion, but he has like five suites in Vegas, so he can go whenever he wants. He says he deals with Hold crazy up. panic attacks and depression, where he thinks he's gonna die, and so he'll just like blow his life savings or or you know break up with a, a girlfriend that he really loved. I like his greatest accomplishment is not yeah. being married or having any. Kids. Exactly, he goes fuck this uh, this Facebook thing. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Now, this guy who's here now, his name is David Cho. What a fascinating story, and according to everybody. Uh, around here. All the morning shows were trying to get him on, but because he's such a big fan of ours, he came to our show first. Really? David Cho's story is quite simple. He's an artist. He's a painter. And years ago, when Facebook was first starting, they opened up an office and they said to him, would you do some graffiti kind of art on the walls? Oh, there's David. Hey, David. Oh, look at that. Beautiful artwork. Wow, gorgeous. Look at this guy. Cool. Hey, wait we can't hear it. you. Oh, sorry. Hey, David. Hey, Howard. Um, as soon as I found out I was going to be on your show, I, I did this painting of you. Beautiful. I'm going to frame that. It's, uh, it's you're gorgeous. You're wearing a loser shirt, and I, I know you collect old mics, so I, I drew all these old mics all over yeah, this That's very that's cool with the old turntable, it's huh? It's beautiful. I go. love it. Beautiful. Frame Veggie, that immediately. Fred, Robin. Get that uh, um, David. framed. David, what's that worth uh, on the open market? Priceless, priceless. Priceless. Oh, I was thinking, uh -huh. I was gonna, I was. That's the original right there, and I was gonna make prints and sell them and and uh, donate all the money to North Shore Animal League. There you go. Hey, beautiful. David's a very successful artist. Now, listen to this story, and I like your T-shirt, the Three oh. Stooges T-shirt. I love the Three Stooges. This dude at the airport just said, "Everyone in life is." Uh, Larry Curley or Mo? Which one are you? I think I'm Mo. <laughs> That's good. But I think everybody likes to think they're Mo. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. everybody's probably Larry. <laughs> I'm probably Curly. <laughs> <laughs> David, let me tell you a story because it's great. Okay. Uh, the reason David's here is he's a big fan of the show, and you were offered interviews on Good Morning America. They were all after you, right, for an interview. Howard, can I break this shit down for you? Go ahead. Okay, first of all, I listen to the show all the time. Yes. So... Can I tell you one thing? I love the show, but can I tell you one thing personally in my life that I hate? Yeah. What? Okay. When you tell stories of jerking off and stuff, yes. I they're funny and I love it. And I'm 35 and I feel old because the the day I figured out how to jerk off and I and I loved it. Yes. I I jerk off the same amount today. Wow. Like at least three times a day. That'll change. And then, but then I I hear you and and like, I'm like, I mean, I'm like, it doesn't get any better. Like, 
<laughs> no. It's just this is what you're going to do all your life. I'm like I'm like at some so so a few days ago. No, I did. It, I, I'm not jerking off as much as I used to. You slow down. Yeah, but you know I have a pretty good sex life with my wife too, so maybe that's part of it. But that see for me, it's like even when I'm having good sex, like I still jerk off, and so that's sort of part of how this all went down. Like up until I was like 50, I had to jerk off like all the time. Right. And then now, like I'm 58. Okay. And. I don't really jerk off that much. And some t- the other night, I jerked off to some porn. And, like, you know how you, like, you almost come, but you don't? And then I was done. <laughs> like, I never even blew a load. That's my whole life. I, I, like, almost am there and then just not there. And Really? Oh, you mean you don't, you don't come when you jerk <laughs> off? This, I, I have... I, I, this is a whole other story, but I spent some time in prison. Yeah. And I learned, like, a really crazy way to jerk off. So What's the crazy way? Let's uh, let's hear about this. This is what they're doing in prison, yeah. sharing jerk-off methods? Yeah, okay. by the way, no one even knows why David's here yet, but no, I'll get to that. that. No, no, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. But, but what's the crazy okay, way you're going to jerk you. off? So, I, I'm, I'm Korean, and I got arrested in, in Japan. Right. It's like... It's like being like a Jew, like being trapped in Nazi Germany. Like mm. I'm like Japanese don't like they Koreans. They fucking hate Koreans. Right. So I'm in prison and I'm getting the fights every day. And once the Japanese like uh, prosecution rate is like 99.9, like once they decide that you're gonna get prosecuted, you're, <laughs> you're going, going to, jail. to jail, right? And <laughs> it's not like you do something good or bad. You go straight to solitary. Right. Oh. Everyone's in solitary confinement. Wow. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, and everything. There's like a there's like speakers in the wall that are like. I don't speak Japanese, but it it's like brainwashing techniques. Like it's like now it's seven o'clock, time to wake up, and it's like a woman's voice. Time uh-huh. to wash the dishes. And don't tell time. me you jerked off to the recorded voice. I definitely did. And uh, <laughs> but you know, but it's what like, was the weird technique you learned? So I jerk off, and that's the end of my day. I'm like, that was the highlight of my day. Now it's seven o'clock until eight o'clock tonight. I have nothing left to do. Like, in yeah, the, what in do you do in prison? Like, did, did some? Did you used to like um, do your artwork in your own urine on the walls in, in uh, well, Japan? Well, I mean, I, I would have a lot of nervous breakdowns. I would contemplate killing myself, stuff like that. They, right, they, but. I was I was like I remember this thing I read in high school about tantric sex. Yeah. And I was like you know, everything in jail that you think about, you're like maybe I should like do 100 push-ups a day or whatever. Right. And then you're like fuck it, like now I I wouldn't do it. There's nothing else to do, so you end up doing it. Do you read a book or do you Reading a book in jail is like watching uh well in a Japanese prison is like reading a book um in with like the DVD uh audio commentary cuz you open the book and like in the like t- 100 people have read the book already. Yeah. So in the aisle, it says, like, don't finish this book. The mom's the killer. And you're like, <laughs> fuck. And then someone, someone, <laughs> someone circles his, his, his thing yeah. and points an arrow and goes, that guy's a fucking asshole. I hate you. And then they're, it's like reading a book with, like, 10 people. Oh, my God. Oh, they, <laughs> so they ruined the ending. They ruined the you, ending, the but prison. there's, like, commentary all throughout the book. Like, I'd, I'd write, like, my booger, and then I'd throw a booger down on the page and, right. like, circle it or something. Yeah. But in order to pass the time, because you're an artist, did you used to paint with your own urine? Well, and for, can you do that? Well, in prison, any prison in the universe... Like, as soon as, like, they hate me because I'm Korean, whatever. As soon as you have any skill that right. alleviates the boredom, you're yeah. the star. Right. You can sing, you can dance, you can whistle, you can draw, whatever, you're a hero. So, oh, when so I, you could draw, so probably the other prisoners like that. Oh, man, that. they would beat the shit out of each other to, like, get my drawings. Like, I, as soon as they found out I was an artist, like, I was, like, the biggest star. In, would you draw pictures of the prisoners and then give it to them? Prisoners, I would draw, like, just pornography for them. They're like, this is my girlfriend, can you, like draw with her asshole open and all this <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> you did it, right? They had yeah, great ideas. Right. <laughs> and then I would draw one and they would just like like tear at each other like animals. Can Japanese guys in prison tell that you're Korean? Like, can they tell the difference? Um, I mean, from physically looking at you? No, not really. So if you just shut your mouth and just say, like, I'm Japanese, can you get well, away? Well, the prison, I mean, they, everyone knows once you don't, because they talk to you and stuff. Right. But um, They figure it out. But I'll tell you my technique, which... Yeah, what is the technique for jerking t- it off? It took me two weeks uh, to, to master it, but, so I read about the, um, the tantric thing, and I was like, I'm going to give this a shot, you know? So I'm jerking off, I'm left-handed, I'm jerking off, and right when you're about to come, you squeeze your chode or, like, the thing that stops you from peeing or whatever, but I... My, Prost- uh, uh, like, pro- yeah. like, right, that area, right between... The taint. Between your balls and your dick? Next time you come yeah. from jerking off or having sex, <laughs> feel that, t- that there's a muscle, and, like, you can push up, like, yeah. I have to use both my hands, so I pushed up. And I blocked the tube from the cum from coming out. Oh. But I fucked up because I didn't know what I was doing. So I was like, I'm about to come and I'm, I'm going to block the cum from coming out. And it just like gave me this, ah, and the cum still came out. And it was like, <laughs> it was like a weird uh, sensation. It, it didn't feel good. I was like, fuck, this sucks. And then 
And then a, a day went by and I was like, I'm going to try it again. Right. Because there's nothing to do. Right. And I tried it again and again and again. And finally, I got to the point where I, I was able to, like, I used both hands and I squeeze up on that tube right when I'm about to come. And then my dick feels like it's like, oh, yeah, but nothing comes out. Right. And I don't have that, like, oh, I need a sandwich and go to sleep feeling, you know? But why would you want to extend it? Because you're in prison and there's nothing to do? Yeah. Right. And when you're with a girl now, can you squeeze something and hold back? Yeah. I, yeah. I've... I've, You've mastered I've that. I've mastered the... Te- I, I spend a lot of time... Right, let me tell people why you're here. You're not here for masturbation reasons. No, you're he's not an expert on masturbation. So listen to... This is a crazy story. David... Wait, wait, Howard. Let me tell you what happened with the... Because we got off key, whatever. Yeah. So I was telling you that it doesn't get better or whatever. And the press is saying all this bullshit like I'm homeless and whatever. I, I, I have a house that I bought for my parents a few years ago. But for me, I travel nine months out of the year. I, I'm an artist. Right. And when I come home, I have my home right now is Las Vegas. I right. have a room at every single casino. All right, well, hey, let, me, let, me, let me explain to people who you are. Okay. Yeah, because right. we're but in I the want, middle I want of a story. I want, I want to tell, tell you how I got on the show. But wait, okay. I want to tell okay, you okay, okay. who you are. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So David's story is this. David Cho is an artist, as you know. Uh, He, years ago, when Facebook first started and opened up an office, they needed an artist to paint some kind of mural or something on the wall. Okay. So I guess someone there knew your work, right, David? Um, Yeah, Sean Parker. The guy from Napster. The guy who's from Napster, and he came in. And he said to you, look... I'll pay you a thousand bucks. That's what we have, and paint a nice mural, or I'll give you some stock in this new company, Facebook. And you said, nah, "I guess I'll take some stock in the company." Now, no one knew what Facebook was, right? Um, the story is a little bit different than that. That's what people have been saying, but it starts a little bit further on before then. Like Go ahead. In two thousand three, um, I got this letter from uh, email from from Sean. I didn't know it was Sean Parker. Yeah. And uh, we had been going back and forth for a little bit, and he would always just write these, like, really strange, like, witty, but, like, just strange emails of what kind of art he wanted from me, you know? Mm -hmm. What did he want? I'm just curious. Like, like people, hey, can you paint this, this? He asked me to paint um, Uncertainty. Yeah. And I was like, oh, How weirdo. Do that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you <laughs> freak. How am I supposed to paint that? <laughs> he was, like, but it was, it wasn't like one word. He was like, I want you to paint like in uncertainty with eroticism and this. And I was like, this is like, this is either a joke or. You know. And he wanted you to paint the walls at this new. No, company he just wanted a painting from me. For, oh, right, he wanted a painting. And, I, and I was, and then, and then, um, just one day he's like, oh, fuck. Like this is 2003. He's like, fuck, I can't get the painting. I'm like, what? Do, what do you mean? He's like. My company's being sued for a trillion dollars right now. Right. And I was like, what company is that? And he goes, he goes, it's Napster. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's like the company that you guys do. He's like, yeah. And he was like 23 or 24 right. at the time. And he goes, you and me, like, he's, he's like, you're the fucking best artist ever. Like, I love your shit. I wow. need to get a painting from you one day. Just wait for this bullshit to blow over and I'll get one from you next time. Good. Cool. So then he started another company called Plaxo. Right. which, like, I guess got big for a while, but he didn't make any money off that either. And then in 2005, he's like, okay, now there's another company that I'm working on called Facebook, right. and I think we're going to get some money this time, so I'm definitely going to get a painting from you this time. Cool. I said, I said awesome. Right. Um, I just got out of prison. I was feeling good. Right. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I go up to Palo Alto where right. uh, I met, you know, you guys saw the Facebook movie? Sure. Yeah. 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 So I was around during that whole time. It's like the most inaccurate like sensationalized movie ever like those guys are all like cool like the fucking raddest coolest guys zuckerberg ever. zuckerberg has been with the same girl for like priscilla for like s- the whole time even before facebook she's right. super rad she gets me snacks and stuff and like they're just like they were chill and the fact is you like them but the but the point is right you're sitting there going hey you know who knows what this company is i mean no one knew what facebook was yeah so and i yeah. wasn't on friendster or myspace or any of those things i hate right. that shit so i was like right. What is, can you, can you, what, what is this? And he's like, this is a, this is a startup company. We're just getting started. And, um, it's social networking for college students. And I was like, what? I fucking Assholes. hate education. I hate college. I hate like <laughs> college everything. students. You hate yeah. social networking. I dropped right. out of school. I hate everything about school. <laughs> right. And, and he's like, he's like, no man, it's like getting huge at all these Harvard and Stanford. And I was like, I don't care. Right. I don't give a fuck. And like, <laughs> people people don't remember like which is weird by the way because you ended up taking the stock 
Uh, and uh, you don't even believe in the company. I'm surprised you didn't grab that. What did they offer you? A thousand bucks for stock? I, the, everyone wants to make it like it, it was sixty thousand dollars. Oh, it's sixty grand. They yeah, offered which you. is which you know a lot of money. Five was it was a lot of money. I was. It's always going to be still a lot, a lot of, of money. Still yeah. a lot of money. Right. And uh, people don't remember like Facebook was a joke. Like, no, I know. So, so back then, right. the guy says to you, we'll pay. Did He's you like, say to him, my price is $60,000 to paint this wall? My, my prices had been going up higher and higher, and I was like, yeah, I mean, if you want me to paint the entire building, it's going to be 60, you know, 60 grand. And, right. and, and Sean's fuck, like, you know, they got Justin Timberlake and shit to play him. And what, the guy is, I've never met someone like this before. Like, he's a skinny, nerdy kid, and he's like, I'm going to go raise money for Facebook. And, and, like, he's just like, I'm going to bend these fuckers' minds. And I'm like, I'm like. Hey, man, dude, pretty big plans for a nerd. I'm like, how are you going to do that? And he transformed himself into an alpha male. Right. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he got like a fucking super sharp haircut, started working out every day, got tan, got like a nice suit. I'm like, this guy's like, crazy and then he goes into these meetings so and did he, you think that this guy could ever pull off even paying you 60 grand like I, were you f- worried no that, no like, he got the money i was there when he got the money from the paypal dude right he's okay. like we got money now you want cash or you want stock and i was like oh fuck i definitely like need 60 grand right now and right you just got out of jail but it didn't matter that i didn't give a shit about facebook or didn't know what it was or you know any of that stuff like you had to have like a college email to get on there and stuff right i was like i don't what a, yeah what most a, people would have said look you know the odds of anybody right. really taking off with an internet company most of these companies come and go all the time especially back then right so you must have been half out of your mind to turn down the sixty thousand dollars right but i like to gamble you know like and you I, are a gambler i i, be- I believed in sean I didn't care about face. I'm like, this kid like knows something, and I'm going to bet my money on him. Did you get to know him as you started the painting? So you said, hey, let me make a decision whether I want 60 grand or the no, stock. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I, I just you said, sized him up and said, this fucker's going I, I, somewhere. I believe in this. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Yeah. yeah. Did you see the color of the Gatorade at the end when they dumped on the coach? Yeah. That's the shit I bet on. You know, like yeah, crazy shit. You remember? The, uh, you go to Vegas a lot, right? You live in Vegas. You live oh, in yeah. So Vegas. can I tell you what happened? Do you be, are you a big gambler? I'm a bi- I gamble with my life. All right, here's what I know about David. Is this right. true? Wait. That forgetting, forget the Facebook for a okay, second. Okay. We'll get back to it. All right. Early on in your life, right. you made your first million dollars by going to Vegas right. and betting some crazy amount of money and kept doubling and doubling and doubling until you made a million dollars. Um, that's not necessarily true either, but yeah, my first million I made in Vegas from gambling. From gambling. From what gambling. type of gambling? Blackjack or craps? It doesn't matter. Any, any... Um, Not roulette. You do it all? I started gambling when I was 15. Yeah. Like, right. like uh, my friend Joey came back from... from he got his uh, driver's permit. We, I live in L.A. He drove back four hours. He's like, there's this place in the desert... And you play games, and if you win the money, they let you keep it. And by like, the way, by the way, I should tell people before we continue this discussion, right. I should tell people that David's Facebook stock now is valued somewhere between a hundred and two hundred million dollars. That he is worth. Uh, Robin, Sitting your, right Robin, here now. Robin, Robin, put your top back on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Robin looks good. They damn right, right she does. And, and, and she's going to look a whole lot better now she realizes what you've got. She's going to go in there and screw us up. Robin, he is. Some people are saying he's worth now $200 million from the Facebook stock. Is this because of the IPO? Yeah. I know, but if. If, D- if they're going public. But, yeah. But if people are going to, like, grab, like, magic numbers out of there, like, like, they're like, oh, it, like, no one's, like, saying. Everyone in the stories right now are saying he's worth two hundred. They're not. They didn't read the part says maybe, which means it might be well a hundred or it might be five hundred million. It right. Might, you it, don't we don't know where it's yeah, going. I mean, end well, up. how many at, shares do you have? What was the payment that you got for creating the art? That the the shares that I got then yes. have I can't explain how the thing works, but it like split forward and right. 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 Uh, so, doubling the stock. So you started out with how many shares, and now what is it up to? I, I don't know. I have no idea. But how do you know it's worth 200 or may, might, may even be worth 500? Who's, who's evaluating this for you? Um, like very powerful Jewish people. Uh, <laughs> well, powerful Jewish people. Well, then they know. know. Then they know. Yeah, right. but so get back to this for a second. You were a young guy. You dropped out of high school. You never went to college. This and that. You were a struggling artist. Your art may be sold for like 100 bucks a, a painting or something if you were lucky. You go to where did you get the money to gamble in Vegas for that initial million dollars? I, I gambled with everything always. You know, fortune favors the bold. Like I would gamble my entire two month salary from Toys R Us, delivering pizzas, anything. Are I, you a degenerate gambler? Do you have a problem? 
from age 15 to 23, I lost every single time. Right. So you are a degenerate gambler. Uh, definitely. But, but you, under, you just love but, it. But I'm 35 now. Yeah. From 23 to 35, I've lost three times. Really? Okay. Yeah. But when you say lost three times, you mean actually gone and lost and, and, money? And left, left. No, no, no. Just left under. Okay. Are know. we going to worry that you're going to gamble away your hundred forty million, two hundred million? I mean, could you pot- potentially like start putting down forty, fifty thousand dollars a bet? Like and go just, and break Vegas? Yeah. yeah. Well, or just go berserk and break yourself. <laughs> it, uh, l- it, let me tell you, like the the whole gambling thing. Like I, you know, like. Just I don't I don't drink I don't do drugs I don't do any of that shit so you ought to start <laughs> yeah. so, keep your money so you I, like girls though right I, I, so I go out and I and I do graffiti and I and I gamble and I do shit that's like crazy and um, you live on the edge but it's not everyone that knows me that like from the outside is like that guy's crazy but you can't fucking like. Okay, so when I was 23, mm-hmm. I lost all my money, which mm-hmm. was not that much money at the time, but my whole world. Because what yeah. were you, like a pizza delivery guy, and uh, were you just doing menial kind of work? I was just, just doing every fucking shitty job you can think of. Right. And I was, I was hitchhiking back from Vegas because I lost everything. And wow. I got in a fight with my girlfriend at the time. She scratched my chest up. She was like, getting back in the car. I was like, fuck off. And we're in New York right now. Uh-huh. Th- what's the same? The New York's the city with a million stories. Yeah, or, yeah. Las You're Vegas re- is a story with one story. Yeah, I was winning, and then I lost it all. Right. So <laughs> everyone has that story, and I'm sitting in the fucking desert, walking back, going, "There is that part of the story that goes, I was winning." So then, what is the, what is the? I lost like. Because it's a vice. It seems yeah. like everybody, even when you're up, you think you're going to score You got to have more. So no that, one knows when to stop. Is exactly. Your point. And right. it's greed. And, right. I was, and I was like, what is, what in life, like, because when you're winning money, it feels fucking awesome. Right. So I go, what else, <laughs> what else feels awesome? Right. Fucking. Fucking right. feels awesome. So I was like, okay, none of, no more of this bullshit. Like, I'm, I'm going to, my story's going to be, I was winning and then I won more and then that's it. There's no, there's going to be no, and then I lost it all. And so I said, if I can fuck a girl and pull my dick out before I explode, yeah. I was like, then, then I'm going to like train myself to be a, like, I'm giving you some insight into my shit, man. I'm like, hey, hey go ahead, bro. And, and I'm even, learning. even, and yeah. like, hey, you're this, the one sitting there with all that money. So let's, we're hey, listening. This, this might make me sound gay, but coming is like so fucking boring. I mean, it's, it's like the end game. Like for sex, all the other shit is awesome. Like, Meeting the girl, seeing if it's gonna like the whole like the build up, the build up, the build up yeah. taking off her underwear for the first time, seeing what kind you're of you're not the only one who feels that way. Is right. that why you've never gotten married? Is that you say your biggest success in life isn't the money? It's that that you've never you've managed not to marry or have kids because otherwise you'll never have that build up again. You want to go through the build up each time. It it's everyone has what they want in life. Like I've heard you for years, and you value companionship. Yes, you know. For me, I value freedom more than anything. And not that, coming right away. And not coming right away. <laughs> right. So Freedom to you is most important. If you were saddled with a wife and kids or a wife, it would mean the end of that excitement. You live for the excitement. Is that correct? It's not necessary. Did you see this uh, Ryan Gosling movie, Blue Valentine? I yeah. think so, yeah. It's like, it's like showing like the awesome part of meeting a girl for the first time. Right. Like, and then the whole thing deteriorates. But that's every relationship. Right. And I'm like, Everyone that I know that's a self-made millionaire or successful doing what they want to do, um, they're, they're just awesome at whatever they are, and then they're all either divorced or have, are in the shittiest relationship. There's only 24 hours in a day. You can't be the best this and also the best dad and husband. And the girl I was with for seven years, I love her. Like I didn't break up with her because I cheated or she cheated or anything. I was just with her one day, and I was like, this is awesome. She's beautiful. She has her own friends, her own hobbies. She leaves me alone. And... I just, like, I'm just, obs- I'm fucking obsessed. Like, uh, like, if the mic or something doesn't look right on your drawing, like, I'll just, like, not sleep and I'll just draw it over and over again. And There's it- no room for a permanent relationship in your life because you are, number one, into your work. You're into, you're into your life. And you really firmly believe that every relationship will eventually get shitty. I mean... Don't you agree that 99% of them do? I mean, yes. of course. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah, so... I, I I hedge my bets and I I'm like uh, and go I'm back, on, at least right, I'm so honest. Back. So yes, you're, I, I like your honesty. Go back to the the first time you went. to So after you were a loser in Vegas, how did you become a winner? You you, okay, you, so, you, began, you became aware of a philosophy that so, the money increment can change, and that's basically how I got to the million. But basically, it's progressive, which you know you can get any Vegas book, and it's 
a, it's a combination of hit and run style, which is as soon as you win anything, you get out. Clarify something. Okay. You went back to Vegas. You, you had saved Vegas. up some money. You didn't saved have a lot of money. money. What would you say you went back to Vegas with? Uh, Ten grand? No, no, no. This is like like. A uh, five hundred bucks or something. Five hundred bucks. You go back and you say, "Now I'm going to make some money. Right. I'm never going to be a loser you again." Be, okay. When so, I'm up, I'm going to stay up, and that's it. So I'm going to. So it. What I'm going to explain to you is sounds like so stupid and easy, but you have to have the discipline. You got to play like a goddamn robot. All right. So you bet ten dollars. Right. You lose the ten dollars. You bet twenty dollars. Right. You lose the twenty dollars. You ba- basically every game in the casino is about fifty fifty, right? Right. So the chances of you losing like thirty, forty, fifty times in a row, that's not going to happen that often. So as long as you just keep like throwing your dick down on the table and be like doubling up, as soon as you win money, you just go upstairs and you put it away. You're not trying to win like a million all at once. Right. If Las Vegas is Goliath, then you're just trying to take little So scratches. you go there, you bet 10, you bet 20, you bet 30. All of a sudden you make your $50 bet. It hits. It hits. So now you won $50. I go back up to my room? No, no. Now you're even. Right. Now you're even. Or uh, you, you, you basically just... Every time you win anything, right. you just store it up in the room. And also, I, I pay someone to make sure I, I play the way I'm supposed to okay. so I don't lose my mind. All right. So let's say that first night you win $200. You take right. the $200 and you bank it. You put it back in your right. safe or whatever. And I room. never stay more than 72 hours. Right. I, I take it. and Well, now that rule's changed. But I take it and I, and I bounce. And okay. then, What's the new rule? <laughs> New rule is you got about $100, $200 <laughs> million. Dollars. He's going to stay there until he loses it all. So then, so then right. for a long time there, I would just I would go to Vegas four times a month. Right. And I would always make a, somewhere in the range of $1,000. Right. $800 bucks sometimes, $1,100 sometimes. And I just, it just dawned on me that, fuck, I don't need to, I don't need to sell this painting. You know, right. I don't need to whore myself out and do all these like weird jobs. I'm like, I can make a living gambling if I don't get greedy. Right. You know, and that was my my base. I was like a thousand bucks. I could live off this. You know, my my my, you know, standard of living is like subterranean. Like, and I know something of your story. Once you said that I can make money gambling. Right. You said fuck charging a hundred dollars for a painting. I'll start charging ten thousand dollars for a painting. And as soon as you started charging ten thousand dollars for a painting, suddenly everybody wanted your artwork. People yeah, start noticing. Yeah, because rich yeah. people they they they, they don't, don't want a guy for a hundred bucks. They want what they can't have. You know. Right. And and you guys have I, you've had this experience like. You just walk into a museum or a, like a lo- hotel lobby or something, and you see is <laughs> fucking. You're like, what is this piece of shit? <laughs> right. Who the fuck paid for this? You know, and it's your turn, it turns out it's a Picasso. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck and, is this? And then you find out it's like worth 140 million dollars, and you're like, who? I need that. Who okayed this? You know? <laughs> yeah. Who okayed? Yeah. Who, who set the price? Yeah. Right. So when you set your prices high, you started to make some money gambling. You right. weren't rich yet. You said, you know, I got enough money to figure out how I'm going to live. I'll charge a lot of money for my painting. It just, and now a painting of yours can go for like a half a million dollars, right? Last year, like, I, I just won. I had a huge show in Beverly Hills. I made a couple million off of my art, and I won a couple million from gambling. So I was like, I'm just going to chill and, like, get work on up. Do you know completely unrelated? What's the most you ever got for a painting? Half a million. Half a million. At this point, yeah. Right. A half a million because you you finally had an attitude shift as an artist. You said, you know what? Fuck this. Yeah, I did. I, did, I was like, if you're going to hire me to paint, give me goddamn money. Yeah, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm paint this year. And then I got a weird call from uh, the, I, I didn't know anything about this country, Azerbaijan. Yeah. And the princess of Azerbaijan wanted a painting for the royal family collection. I was like, fucking cool. Right. So I sold her a painting and I'm like, hey, I don't have to work the rest of the year. So a Half a million. Half a million. What did you, what was the painting of? Uh, there was like a topless bat riding a motorcycle with a hippo. Topless bat. Cool. And, <laughs> Make uh, me one of those. It's like um, <laughs> Make me a duplicate. Yeah, I mean, no kidding. I, just, I, I, made, I made you a painting, Howard. No, thank and, you. Uh, no, listen, I'm gonna lock that up in a safe. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> I think it'd be worth a fortune. Has any of your stuff resold for way more money? Um, I, I, I don't know. You what, don't keep tabs on the market. Do you have an agent who sells your paintings and all that stuff? Howard, can I tell you what happened? Yeah. How, how this shit? I have to tell you. Go ahead. So I told you I'm, I'm in Vegas. It's February 1st, right? And uh, I have a friend, Yoshi Obayashi, who's a comedian who also works in porn. So he always gives me, like, blank, like, DVDs that he burned at work of all his porn. Right. And I just always have it on me. Right. And he always thinks it's funny to just give me, like, all these pornos and then just throw one transsexual or one <laughs> prolapsed anus porno in there. Right. And I don't know which one it is. So I'm, I stick the DVD into the, 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 you know, to start watching it in Vegas. And um, I, I don't know if you do this, but 
I grab my tissues that I'm going to jerk off into, and I tuck it under my chin. So it lo- looks like an ascot, like Thurston Howell the Third. No, I roll mine up in my and put it in my sock. So I'm like this, and <laughs> that's awesome. You wear Thank your you. socks? Oh yes. That's a that's a black guy thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm I grew up in a black neighborhood. Okay. Right. How come black guys don't take their socks off when they're Because we we just fucking that's how we got, that's how we roll. That's you get down. Yeah, yeah. All right. And we don't take sh- that all that shit off. <laughs> so I, I stick the uh, DVD in, and. I'm like, there's like this many, so I'm like, it, for sure, it's not the transsexual one. And I lay on my bed, and, I, and it, it's fucking the transsexual one. Right. And my dick goes, Bruh. or actually, it got super hard. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, fuck, now I gotta change the DVD. So I would stand up, and I have like my sad dick hanging down, and I got my ascot tissues, and uh, and I get up, and my phone rings, and it's a girl that I was like just flirting around with. Nothing ever happened. Right. Like just nothing. It just like went cold, but I still had her number from like four years ago. Right. And it's just, I will suck your dick every day and night. Like, no, you don't have to marry me, no girlfriend. Just, like, I'll just come into your home, give you a blowjob. I know you love blowjobs. And, and I will uh, just, just give me $2 million. Right. And I was like, what a fucking weird text to get. And you, I, now, you mean this is happening now that the word is out that you're worth I didn't know $200 the, million? I didn't know the word got out. And I'm, right. and I'm like... I'm standing there with the tissues like this, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh fuck, what the hell? And I'm like, that's fucking weird. And then can she really give a good blowjob, this girl? I never even had sex with her. Uh, and she said to you, hey, here's the deal: give me two million, and you'll get a blowjob every like, day. The every rest day of your and life. night. I'm like, where the fuck is this shit coming from? And right. then, you know, it was th- two, three in the morning, and then uh, my my assistant, his phone is blowing up. He's like, my my first, my parents call me and say, there's like. News people like trying to jump over the gate and stuff, <laughs> right. and I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" And and he goes, "Good morning, America wants me to come pick you up right now so you could be on the morning show." And then it was like Al Jazeera, Ellen, every fucking like news outlet in the universe wants to interview. Was you. trying to get me, and I'm still sitting there with my tissues tucked in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this with my dick hanging out, and I'm like, and every news organization and wants you. <laughs> I'm no, like, I'm in the middle of beating off. I can't go on Good Morning America. I'm trying to change and, my. So porn. how do you? How and do you I'm guys... sitting there going, that fucking asshole from the New York Times broke this fucking story, and the only thing I think in my head is, ev- everyone wants to interview me. And respect to, to you guys. Thank you. you guys are the only guys that didn't contact me, and you guys are the only <laughs> ones I wanted to talk to. I'm like, I want to fucking talk to the king of all media, and it's the only show where I could talk freely about anything I want. And well, I'm honored. I mean, I, I, I knew that all these organizations were after you. They wanted to fly you yeah, in. Yeah, and you and guys uh, were the only ones that didn't offer, and I was like, yeah. I just want to talk to Howard, you know? <laughs> and, and, and not even just to interview you. Like, who the fuck can I talk to now that's, it? like, like, Everyone, as soon as you got that $500 million series, like, give me money. Like, you're the only one I could relate to now. They're like, give me money, give me money. Your fucking fr- friends, family, whatever, all this weird shit. And, and um, it's like... It's crazy. It's crazy, right? Well, well, l- let me understand something. I want advice, man. How did, but, okay, we'll get to the advice. But I, I still want to understand your story because it's wild. So, so wh- how did the New York Times guy get your name? Were you just listed as one of the shareholders? Okay, so um, basically... This here's the thing about Sean and Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, like the same way I didn't really know anything about Facebook or didn't think anything of it. I believed in Sean in right. the same way. Those guys like love my art, and sometimes I think maybe they don't even like my art. They just like that I'm this guy that just does like like I think you're a true artist because you you're honest and you express. And when I make art, like anytime, like I could I could like Hitler was a fucking artist. And they said his art was shitty, and look what he ended up doing. Like, right. I feel like a killer sometimes, and I'm like, I'm not killing anybody. Right. I'm just going to, I don't care if it offends anybody. I don't care if someone's upset by it. I want to express myself as honestly. That's what a true artist right. is. An artist expresses themselves, and then the, you you got to be just be honest and let it all hang right. out. Right, and my mom br- brainwashed me since I was a kid that I was the best. She's like, I was born, and she's like, you're the best artist in the world and the most handsome. I was like, okay, I don't. So think Zuckerberg that. and oh, so get back one so, second. So, let, let, you, you're all over the place. Okay. Let me because let me let all me right, back right. you up because you got your fascinating guy. <laughs> when you went to Vegas and you made the million, you kept putting the money aside and right. this and that. At the same time, you actually racked up a million dollars in winnings as you kept banking and banking and banking every time. Right. You won. Which okay. So I w- I mean I. What like, was your biggest score? Like you'd go to Vegas and win blah 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 in one shot. Uh, that time, well, it, it wasn't like at 30, I went one time and won the million. It was over that right. whole year. So that time in a year, you made a million dollars in one year. I had made a million dollars from 500. You went to a million. 
Yeah, I mean, right. it just it's like a drug. Like at some point, a thousand doesn't. And at do the it same time, once you have a million, right? Do you say, hey, I'm going to charge a fortune for my painting because I don't really need to go and do every single job now? And then your paintings and your artwork starts to click, and everything's clicking. And within that time, because everything was clicking. Zuckerberg and and the uh, Sean dude from from uh, Napster, Napster. Right. they offer you sixty thousand dollars or stock in Facebook, and you said, "Hey, Sean's a cool dude. I'm watching this guy transform himself. He's wild. I'm gonna take the stock in this stupid fucking company. I don't believe in Facebook." <laughs> and that was the smart. Could you imagine your life today if you hadn't taken the stock? You would have been one of those guys walking around. Oh, if I'd only taken that fucking. He'd stock. have changed no. the DVD but, and the porn. You're no, not kidding. No, 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 I wouldn't, Howard. You wouldn't. You would because, have no regrets because. I think of you as someone that's in my position that does what you want and then got a crazy payday and people are like, why the fuck is Howard getting 500? I'm like, because he's the best. No one does what Howard does, so he deserves it. And then I, I forgot what they offered Dave Chappelle when he lost his mind and went to Africa. It was right. something like, like $50 million. Uh, 50 million yeah, they're like, yeah. because he's unique and one of a kind. I, I, basically, I was with Mark this recently, like two months ago, uh -huh. painting the new Facebook, which is like the most giant. It's like. 18 of these buildings. Right. And uh, what they pay you for that? I, I did. This was a freebie this a time. Freebie. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah, look at what you're <laughs> Good getting. <for> you. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I love right. Mark, and I was, I was, um, I was painting it. And this what do you paint? Do, do you paint the whole wall in? in I paint like everything. Graffiti style. A anything. I. Is I, it inside or outside? You're painting the inside of the building. A anything. Do me a favor. Get out there in the outside. hall and start painting. I'll paint whatever you want. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No. No. Everyone's like this graffiti guy. I'm like, I do oils. I, I'm the master of my craft. Were you great when you were a kid at the? Artwork? I've been I've been drawing since I, I fell out of my mom's pussy. I used the umbilical cord. Oh, good I, for you falling out of there. Yeah. Oh, there, there you are. There are the walls you paint. That's uh, 2005. I did those. That's Facebook. Yeah. Wow. I was just like fucking going for it, you know. You just do it like uh, it's graffiti art, but also you do paintings, you do this, that, and the other thing. I do, you know, it, you know, graffiti. If you look it up, it's like it's illegal, right? Right. When I when they told me I was going to be on Stern, like I couldn't contain myself, and I was like, I, I lost my mind. I was like, fuck, I got to go paint something. And my landlord, he like, uh, uh, in New York, my old landlord in Chinatown, he's he's like, Dave, I heard this story. He's like. Come paint like on the building, you know, right. and it's like when someone's asking you to do graffiti, it's not graffiti anymore. Right. right yeah. I painted a building once where they demolished the whole building yeah. just to keep the the wall. Wow. I mean, so it's like it, that's crazy. Is that illegal? It's if someone's ask if someone asks you to rape you, it's not rape anymore. Right. That's right. right. It's no, like, no, it's consensual. Yeah. All right. So it's more fun going out and painting a wall then you're not supposed to. Of that's, course. That's right. It's always more fun. Right. It's the illegality. Right. Now, why did you end up in jail? Uh, before you went and painted this legendary uh, building for Facebook and, and got all this stock, why were you in jail? What were you doing that was wrong? Okay, so I only saw a therapist for like a month, but he says I'm missing the... the like most people, like when they do something stupid or make an insane decision or something, they right. think about it, right? Right. He says you're missing that part. <laughs> He's like, you just do shit without thinking about it, you right. know? So, th and that, you know, goes into like how I paint. Everything I do, I do the That's same. It's part way. of who you are. Right. So, but what, I, but what did you go to jail specifically? So, I was, for? In, I was in Japan, like, you know, graffitiing the walls, stealing bikes, and. You know, in Japan, it's a crazy society. Have you been there? Never. I, I will never go. It's I'm too tall for Japan. <laughs> I'll stick they'll, out like a they'll, giraffe. They'll fucking worship you out there. Uh, yeah. um, they don't like, like if I lost my, left my wallet here, they would just leave it there. And Until you a, could get it, it. It's a very, like, that kind of society, you know? So they don't lock their bikes up. And I would take a bike and I would just go tag all of Tokyo. And then, you know, I was going crazy. So you were a thief. I was a thief. I was a doing bicycle graffiti. thief. I was doing all kinds of <laughs> shit. Were you, know? you also a looter during the uh, Los Angeles riots? This is the only thing my dad's pissed about. Because when all this shit happened, my dad's like, "Oh, the Korean news." I was like, "Fuck the Korean news!" Like, all they do is like <laughs> care about when I'm getting married, that I'm fat, and that uh, how much money I make. That's all they ever ask me. Right. I was like, "Don't talk to those fuckers." And he's like, "Yeah, they just pretty much, you know, reprinted the whole New York Times story." But at the end, uh, this is going to be sort of fucked up. What I'm going to say, but yeah. I was young, so. Right. I was 92. Yeah. I was 15 or 16 years old. Uh huh. And the LA riots started. And, right. you know, my family's business and everything was in, in Koreatown. And they were just fucking going after the Koreans like crazy. Right. You know? And I was watching this and I was just feeling like it was like a race war, you know? Yeah. I'm like, they're just coming after us, burning. The, Koreatown was, got burned down to the ground. Right. And I felt like we're just not. The the riot side were not being represented properly. I need to go out and like 
t- you know, get, go against the Mexicans and the blacks, you know? Right. So, you know, in the, in the Korean newspaper, they wrote, in, in, in 92, he looted uh, against the Koreans with the blacks. And I was like, actually, it was the other way. But... <laughs> you were looting, but you were looting. You were trying to loot the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, once you got out there, it was just a giant, like, All right, so when you were young, you looted. When you got to Japan, you I stole stuff. I went crazy. You went fucking yeah. berserk. They caught, what did they catch I, you I, stealing I, in Japan? No, no, in Japan... This uh, undercover security guard, uh, this is the, oh, I can't believe, it's like, I did something fucked up at one place, but he was from a different store or something, and he thought that I had stolen something from there, but I'm an artist, and I have, like, I have tons of, like, art books and shit out, and so I had that in my backpack, and he thought I stole, like, it was like this weird, the... You were framed. It wasn't, it's like... He was stealing, but he, not what he, he was ca- caught for. He was, right. he was stealing things, but not the, the stuff was, that he thought but you I were did, stealing. You know, and, and, and that was all. You did a crime, but not you got convicted of a crime you didn't do. And he was screaming at me in Japanese, and right. he was all plain clothes. And I was like, "Bro, get the fuck out of my face! I don't know what you're saying. I'm right. not Japanese." And then he pushed me, and then I knocked him out, Ooh. and then I took off, and then <laughs> I was, and then all these. How cops, much time did you do in Japan for doing that? Um, the, I'll tell you the way they announced my sentence. Right, David Cho for the crimes you've committed against the Japanese people. You get seven years. Wow. Uh, uh, suspended. Oh. So I was already in. I, I like. So I, they make you shit your pants, right? <laughs> I, 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 I was in there for three months, and then they were like, you know, you don't fuck around in Japan, right? You don't. You don't. So did they deport you? Uh, no, they actually just let me out, which was confusing to everyone. And they right. said I could come back, you know, but um, it was. <laughs> I, hey, I, I'm a, that was a long time ago. So what man. type of pussy are you getting? Now that the word's out that you're worth over two hundred million dollars, perhaps we're not sure exactly what you're worth. It could be five hundred million. We know you're worth. We just more know than he has Facebook stock, right? And we know you're worth over a hundred million dollars uh, because of this. Unbel- you, you, are you the most successful artist in the history of the planet now with your, with your, uh, payment from Facebook? Sure. Yeah. Why not? You are? Why not? <laughs> I don't know. But aren't you, I mean, who's made more money? Most well, it's artists. not an artist that's, but pay- his payment was the highest in history. He got a Facebook, he, his payment for painting the <laughs> fucking wall. Pay- painting you Facebook. Know, okay. yeah. Robin, go with this. All right, I'm going <laughs> with this you. I just wanted husband. to know where you're going. You know, try to be like Giselle with Tom Brady. He doesn't want to get married. <laughs> stick it. I stick just have him. to give him a blow job every blow him every day <laughs> is that an offer Robin? blow I'll him now that. see if he likes it it's like king tut over there uh so david what's the scoop are you uh you getting all kind of pussy now or what well so yes yeah. i mean uh, so this girl that i was with for seven years and and i was just sitting there one day and nothing was wrong except for and i and i do get really manic depressive sometimes where i i know it's completely irrational right. but i am totally convinced that that moment that I'm going to die soon. Right. Like, like, and then it, it, it makes me act even crazier. So I was like, this, this is a good girl. She deserves to be with like a stable, normal dude. And so I, I like I said, a million, like I, I value my freedom, right. you know? And so that was one of the biggest regrets of my life. And I, and I let it go to, it's like, I regret it and I don't regret it, you right. know? And now you're free to go get laid like crazy. Yeah, so I, 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 I do. I mean, I went crazy and... Uh, um, you fucking any, uh, like, celebrity types? Yeah, everybody. No shit. <laughs> fucking, you, you know, it's... You fucking celebrities? Why not? I mean, are you? Howard, up until this sh- fucking story broke, yeah. I fucking love my life, man. Yeah. I had a good life. I was gambling you were and underground, winning. underground, yeah. Not like, you were gambling and I, winning. I talked to Mark. He's like, it doesn't matter how much money, billionaire, trillionaire... You can never pay for your privacy back. Mm-hmm. And so when this guy from the New York Times contacted me and says, you're going to be, you're gonna, you know, he was trying to like connect with me. He's like, hey, I used to write graffiti and all this shit. And I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm, I'm like, he's like, you're going to be on the cover of the New York Times. You can't even pay for that. And I was like, you know, for, I, I listen to you when you get like all these offers and people are like, I can't believe Howard turned down like, you know, being the host of America's Got, you know, like just yeah. whatever, like. Right. And it's like, because you know what you want out of life, and right. then you make those decisions. So you would prefer not to be famous. So I think about it for a second. I'm like, that would be so cool to be covering the New York Times. Not that cool. I don't need that kind of attention. You so know? you're saying you were already fucking celebrities b- before even this story came out. I, I remember when you had Eli Roth on here, the guy yeah. at the yeah. hostel, and you were like, are you fucking all these celebrities? And he's like, fuck that shit. I'm fucking like girls in like Yugoslavia and stuff. And 
You know, I fucked porn stars, Power Rangers, A-list celebrities, D-list celebrities. You fucked a Power Ranger? Yeah. That How was, was like, that? How is that, by the way? I've never had that. That shit was <laughs> rad. That was, that was uh, that 1999. Was that was a while ago. <laughs> wow. And, it, and it's like, uh, there's, you know. So in other words, because you're a great artist and you were making a very great living. You want to know the move, Howard? Go ahead. Okay. You know what the whore trap is, right? Go ahead. No, man. what is the whore, whore trap? Teach me. The whore trap is when a, this is sorry, Robin. I, it's, like, <laughs> it's when a woman, you Robin, know, cover your ears. A woman changes the inflection of her voice. She pushes her tits together and she like flirts with a guy to get you know the, all the guy wants to do is fuck her, right? Right. And the girl knows she, there's no way she's ever gonna fuck the fuck her or fuck the dude, but she still wants like stuff like food and her bills pay or whatever whatever it is right she flirts with the guy to get what she wants and she's never gonna fuck him right so i this is gonna fucking make me sound like such a douchebag but whatever <laughs> i do the reverse whore trap go ahead because what does a pretty girl do all day she like looks in the mirror and she's like checking her hair and her makeup and she's just like on facebook or myspace there are always pictures of them like how hot they are an artist is the same thing like i paint people like i i'm like i'm like the i i say i'm the best face painter after peter north you know and it's like you just i just stare at faces all day painting them and so a girl who's like very vain and stuff and finds out oh my god like you're, you're you paint women so amazingly and all this shit and i got they they see my stuff like now like they want something from me you know right. like they want a they're like oh my god i want this famous artist to paint me and so now it's the reverse or trap like, I get them to do stuff for me and all this shit, and I never So, like, if there's a really hot chick, you'll take her up to the studio, paint her, and right. then fuck her? Yeah. Maybe he won't even paint her. Right. No, I never paint them. <laughs> oh, you don't? Yeah. They're I, just I, trying to get you to paint them. Why not paint them, though? Because who cares? You're not interested. I mean, I, I just paint whatever I want. I don't want... How many different chicks do you fuck a, a week? Like, seriously, you're on a roll. Uh, I don't know, man. It's... It's... Like, can you get ten chicks a week? I, I fucked 10 girls in one day once. What? Get the hell out. Yeah, it was my record. And did you, did you do that technique where yeah, you hold your dick? Technique. I you did, did the that, technique. But at the end of the day, I felt like the skin on my dick was off. And, it's too uh, many 10, right? Here, here's the thing, though. Are these girls 10s or are they like 5s? Oh, it's I've, I've fucked every single thing you can think of. You, from a 1 to a 10? Yeah, I mean, I'm not picky. I mean, there was one girl I couldn't even get my arms around her. <laughs> you know? like, really? She was yeah. so fat you couldn't put your arms around her and you I, fucked her? I'm a horny dude, Howard. Dude, you, know? you are horny. <laughs> but that, how did, I that's mean, why I want to hear you about jacking off and shit. And you're like, you're like 50, and I'm still beating off. Like I'm, I'm like, it'll, fuck, man. It'll, it'll calm down somewhat, but I still beat off. But let me ask, how do you? Robin, do, like, you ever been with how your, do you find ten people? Robin, you ever been with an Asian guy? No, I haven't. Fuck, Robin. You, <laughs> I, Robin, you know what you just said right now? What? Like I, I never have. Uh huh. It's every girl I've ever fucked. Not every girl, but. 90% of the women I've ever had sex with, yeah. either before I fuck them or after I fuck them when you're just laying there or like when you're about to stick it in, and this is the fucked up part, Must a lot of them are even Asian, they're like, wow, this is the first time I'm going to fuck an Asian guy. Right. And I'm like... <laughs> well, where are you guys? <laughs> well, yeah, you guys tell, don't like tell, keep to yourself. Tell, tell me if this statement makes any sense. Yeah. Black women are the Asian guys of girls, and Asian guys... Or an Asian girls are the black guys of girls. Yeah, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's like so. What do you, you say? You got a big dick, or is it the, is you? You small? I I think I have an average size dick for someone my size. Right. But there you got was six inches. At least, but oh, there good. was right. there, there was a point when I showered uh, naked with men for many years. Yeah. Totally not gay. In in jail. Starting with jail. Right. Starting. Uh, so yeah. I, I get to J Japan, and I'm in prison, and that's a bath culture. They don't take showers. Right. So I'm getting in a giant bathtub with all these fucking Japanese dudes with uh, <laughs> tattoos and shit. And I'm like, am I five years old taking a bath with my brother right now? Like, what the fuck is this? That's weird. And they don't shave their pubes or anything. Right. So they're getting out of the bathtub, and they have these beards like that are down to here. And you just see like a red red dot sticking out where the tip of their dick is, or yeah. you don't see anything. Wow. wow. And like, I, like I, women. I, I don't shave my shit, but I keep it tight, you know? Yeah. Right. And they're like, are you a porn star or something? How come your dick's so big? And I'm like... <laughs> Man, you guys have like the smallest dicks I've ever seen in my life. All right. And then a year later, I'm in Africa, I'm in the Congo, and I'm taking showers with dudes out there. I, I shower a lot with guys. All right. <laughs> and these guys have the fucking biggest dicks I've ever seen in my life. Right, they're looking at you like you got nothing. And yeah, and they're like, 
they're like they're like hey you want to know why our dicks are so big and i'm like fuck yeah yeah and you know i'm in the part of africa like the national geographic style where the women have tits like down to their knees and shit yeah like cucumber tits <laughs> yeah yeah like like they're, they're, yeah. they look like they have four arms you know <laughs> i like that nbc's banking on me to uh, oh, to behave my myself God. on america's got talent look at what a level i'm at <laughs> go ahead so yeah I, so so this you go to africa and there's a lot of broads with uh, cucumber tits uh, yeah and in, in africa <laughs> it's a bucket shower you just go to the river and you get I'm in the Congo, and right. you take this bucket of dirty ass water, you scrub down in like the side, and then you dump this bucket of water over you. Uh-huh. And there's like I'm showering with two dudes that are like my guide, and there's like all these naked kids running around. He's like, he's like little babies with like big dicks. Everyone has a big dick, and he's like, he's like, that's why. I'm like, what do you mean that's why? He's like, because we're always naked. You know, they don't they wear bras. That's, they think that, so. The gravity, gravity. pulls their he's dick like, down. He's like, he's like, I should be naked they, more. He's like, the women don't wear bras, so their t- tits just come down in here. And same right. thing with the guys. We they just, have no support. He's like, we run around naked all the time. Our dicks just start fucking. You know. I like that. That, that Good Morning America was fighting to get you on the air. <laughs> what what part of this the, interview could they air? Exactly. I'm like, I want to fucking talk to Howard. <laughs> You're talking about then, cucumber tits, big cock, <laughs> fucking uh, about gambling and Barbara well, Walters, sixty minutes. And then I was like, you know what? Fuck that. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to do Howard Stern, then if you can um, get Barbara Walters to do graffiti with me, I'll do 2020, right. which I'm doing right after this. Oh. Okay. And then uh, I think I'm going to do Jimmy Kimmel, and all we're going to do is talk about you the whole time. So. Hey, Jimmy's my boy. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Good. I know that. Yeah. So. yeah, Jimmy's a good man. So, uh, hey, so, 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 uh, what are you, so, so what are you going to do? First of all, why don't you own a home anywhere? You live in Vegas in a five-room suite? No, no, no. I have a suite at every hotel that I just stay at. Because oh. he's such a gambler. When you, he's gamble, a high when you win a million dollars, they give you anything you want. Yeah. Are, you, are you comped wherever everything. you go? Everything. Everything. But are you afraid because of your degenerate gambling that right. you could go? I know that you know how to bank the money once you win and stuff. Right. You'll stick to that, right? Just now because you have a couple hundred million dollars, are you going to go berserk and start breaking your code? Like, you know. I, I, like. You better think this shit through with me. No, I. Here's the thing. Everyone's like, "Oh, this homeless, like, raggedy graffiti artist, whatever, is rich." I'm like, I've been rich for a while. I've right. had, I've had a couple. What of were you worth before even? Th- forget the Zuckerberg stuff and the Facebook. Were you worth a couple of mil? Um, yeah, for sure. And so five. Yeah, uh, over five. Not just from gambling, but from painting and gambling. And when I was thirty, I made my first million from gambling. Then after jail, I had a my a huge show in London with the same gallery that represents like Banksy and those guys mm-hmm. yeah. and that show made 2.3 million nice and then yeah it just keeps you know i i have a fucking good life until the <laughs> until this facebook shit give me that You've fucking been stock exposed. you know what put I'll it all it in my you. name and let me worry I'll, about I'll it. Give it i'll don't worry about it i'll take care of you if you go bankrupt <laughs> but but uh, howard go ahead it's like do you remember what it was like when you made your first million that feeling there was no sort of um uh, time that I ever felt like I had any money. See, I have, like, I my, I still do everything the same. Like, I still I, work because I feel like... Work is God, I'm, man. That's the only thing that br- that brings any kind of happiness. You but, know, like, but I don't feel like I, like, I'll, I don't spend money on myself. I spend it on my wife, my kids, my, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't feel like I'm a wealthy man. But you are, though. But you f- don't feel that way, you know? I don't conduct my life any different. I, I, exactly. I, I think you have to be born that way. Yeah. I, I don't know how people... I don't know how people ever get that feeling. Right. I have sort of this weird work ethic. But I know what you mean. Like, I don't think I'd, I could... St- like, like, I took a job with America's Got Talent for what reason? It wasn't money. Oh, you did end up doing that? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm the judge. Where the fuck have you been? I... I, I, I I have. He's been busy. I slowed yeah. down. Listen, fucking ten girls a day. After girls. the Artie incident, I sort of stopped. I still listen to you guys, but not as you know. Oh, because why? Because what Artie did? It just it was so. De- I like cried after that happened, and it like depressed the shit out of me wow. for a long time. Yeah, like, join the club. Yeah, but mm-hmm. no, I still listen to you guys. But um, I, you know, you do. You buy your parents a house. You you get the. You eat at the best restaurant. You get, you do all the shit you do. But you live permanently in Vegas in these I, different suites. I, I live in hotels all. Over. I mean, I'm just traveling nonstop. That's I work, like I. That's what I do. You know. But you completely independent of this whole thing. This is like s- completely random. Yeah. I was supposed to be on Letterman last night for something else. For like, what? Um. So there's this. Have you heard of this rap group, Dian Word from Africa? It's no. like my African brother and sister, Yolandi and Ninja. Yeah. So they they were on Letterman last night, and I was gonna play drums with them, but I didn't want to. I didn't want anyone to find out. That I was gonna, and it was huge. I was like, "Fuck!" Like my other passion is playing drums, so I was like, "But you're I'm a gonna, lucky guy. Like you, you have a lot of cool shit going." Now. I I fucking love working, and because what I do for work is what I love to do: you play do music, art. make art, like you know, and like, get laid. 
Good Lord. <laughs> so 10 chicks in one day. You, 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 so you're never going to settle down. I mean, you're, you're just going to I like mean, I, I'm too old to use words like never or forever. Who fucking knows what's going to happen in this life? Right. I might walk out of this building and someone might shoot me in my head and right. your painting might be worth more money or something, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, I want my, I want my painting going up Stop and down. saying No, that. thanks for the painting. I'm going to have to fucking frame this but, thing, But man. you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys are, no. like, powerful, rich people, and it's like you... Like, you have the house in the Hamptons, you got your boats and everything. Like, you buy all the shit you're supposed to do, and then what? You give money to charity. <laughs> That's right. right. And then, and then Hopefully. You, yeah, you do all the things you do. Right. And then one thing I noticed about rich people is they're very uncreative on how they spend their money, you know? Well, but, I'm going to tell you something. Okay. You know what money represented to me? All right. Uh, you, you mentioned the word freedom. All right. My freedom is not to have to sit there and bow to a program director ever again. Right. It, it, to me... Any kind of success meant right. that creatively now, right. it's kind of like what you're saying. Right. Um, gee, I want to paint a painting. I do it now because I want to. Right. And now I don't have to sit there and suck the fucking no, dick but, of the man. But there's no and now. It's been like that for a while. That's right. I don't give a shit. I don't need, like, I'll do it, I'll do it in the street. Well, then like, you've got everything. Have you ever had your dick sucked by two women? Like, have you ever, like... Uh, let me think about that. Wait, wait. Let me think. Uh, Come on. Come <laughs> on. Like well, I, I was time? I was with two women while one was sucking my dick. Howard, what the f- where is? Are we being filmed right now? Yes. Yes. Where's hopefully. the camera? Hopefully. <laughs> it's like, like, to, like to, to to like stand and like look over at a mirror and then one one girl's like sucking your dick and the other one's like licking your ass or <laughs> sucking like. I've never had my ass licked. Howard. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? Like you're a clean dude, right? Yeah, I think so. It's like an awesome feeling, man. Yeah. And like. When don't I, you feel bad for the girls putting a tongue up your dick? De- what your if ass? they want to do it? I don't know. I can't he imagine never that. thinks that anybody yeah. wants to. I don't to. think anyone Howard. really wants to be up my Howard. ass. <laughs> when I hear like you talk about Beth and sometimes Beth is on here, like you love her and adore her and vice versa. Yeah. You're the fucking king. You're the queen. You guys you guys should fucking like live. You see uh, uh, Coming to America when they're like washing, right, right, right. Right. washing their balls. And <laughs> Dude, like you're the fucking king of all media and you haven't had your balls in one girl's mouth each and one like you want to know feel something that once in your like you want to know something your b- David? birthday let like feel that you know what i don't even feel that pressure anymore i'm so I, I really love my wife and i feel like her me the security of that relationship i know this sounds weird to a guy like you because I, I was in the same boat you're in no but i'm naturally that was, like that yeah. Guy, you know, and, and and don't get me wrong. To be totally honest, there are days, you know, even as in love as I am, and everything's good with my wife. There are days I go, wow, you know, I could be getting my dick sucked. He could and, have a ball in each and girl's I have, mouth. I could have one. Well, I, my balls ain't that big. <laughs> but uh, you know, you know, but but what I have with her is, uh, it's like no pressure. It's nice, and the sex is great. And you know what? Do you really? Do you think you really need that much sex? Think about it. If I told you that you really don't need that much sex. Of course I don't need it, but... Right. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm happy. You're, you're... You know? And, and as far as a girl's tongue up my ass, you know, I'm not that great a wiper. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you. Well, the remnants. Then, well, then what about Robin? It's like, okay, you got... Right. You got Robin this. isn't why do, her own thing. Why doesn't... Why don't, like... She's well, particular. You, you're particular, but, like, do you like massages? Sure. Why not, like... Let the guy stick his finger in why, there? No, why not get, like, five, like, ripped dudes just, like, massaging you all, like, one... <laughs> oh, like, she does that. Like, oh. just close your eyes and just have, like, all these guys massaging you at the same time and, like, why don't you do sh- cool shit like that? Yeah, but at some point, you it know... It doesn't even sound like fun to me. I, but I live... Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> you close your eyes, you got all these hands, like... Uh... Uh... Some women are a handful, and sometimes you don't want the headaches and the problems, and at some point, also, you just don't want to be that guy who fucks them and leaves them, and you're kind of treating women like they're just meat. But but you're, but you you're But what if they... Like if you're well, just they're honest using with you, them. they're using they're you, using, and you're using, yeah. and I'm and using them. And everyone's honest, you know. They're not. Yeah, but people do get hurt. Of course, they do. You know, and sometimes at some at some point you'll see you'll get kind of nauseated from all that hassle. Well, here's but the, you, I, don't get me wrong. You're having a fucking blast. Right. But here's the Enjoy thing: it's not, it's not, it's not like oh, I'm doing this like from yesterday. I've been doing this for a while now, and so I. Do you ever have any long term relationships besides that seven year one? I mean, do you ever have? I, a, I tried uh, last two. Uh, a year ago, and it lasted six months. We were like about to kill each other. Yeah, but um, it's not your thing. So I had that feeling of, I've done all this shit too. You know, I've no. everyone's like, oh, this guy's worth two hundred million dollars. It's like, do the stakes really taste that much better? Is there any, like, is there something that's a billion dollars? Well, you have something wonderful now in your life because of what's going on with you and your art and all of that. What you have is 
um, it, it's it, no, you can only have so many stakes. You can only be so much. Right. So a list pussy any better than D list pussy? It's like, uh, yeah. no, it's yes. the same. Except a, no, it's no, not. What you have comes is, with a headache. And- you have the security <laughs> that most people in America don't have. A lot of people Fuck are sitting security. There, I don't uh, No, Come on. A lot of people sit there and they go, shit, how am I going to ever feed my wife? How am I going to feed my family? How can I take care of my parents? You have the ability to do that, and that's the great thing. That that is a great, great thing. Your that you whole have. family came after you after they found out the. No, no, not everyone. Cousins, uncles, <laughs> some weird. Yeah. Did. Some did, and so, some didn't. <laughs> What is this? You paint sometimes with your nose bleed? Like you'll no, let the blood. No, that you, was in jail. Oh, when you were in jail, you'd punch yourself in the face. No, you know what happened? And make your nose you bleed know what and happened? paint on you the wall. You know what happened when I went to jail? Yeah, I, they um, I resisted arrest because I was like, I didn't know the guy was like a cop. You know, the guy right. I punched, and they were they jumped on me, and none, no one spoke English, and they were, you know, I I was like, get the fuck off me, and then I got up and I started running again, and a cop I didn't see a huge one just grabbed me by my neck and just kneed me right in the Ooh. back, oh, and boy. so. My kidneys were bleeding. Oh. I was internally bleeding, and I was in the worst fucking pain of my life. Oh. And I and I and I was in prison, like total like American asshole, like f- like fuck you, like get get me out of here. And they they were like, um, stop lying. You don't stop. Like there's no blood coming out of you. There's nothing. Right. And for th- I I've never I, I I've been in a lot of fights and I've been in a lot of pain. So like when I tell you this was like the worst pain, I thought I was gonna die. I felt like something was like gonna explode inside me right and not a, a guy's a, another penis or anything just right. i just felt like so so i'm like i'm i'm gonna die right now right if they don't believe me and no one's taking me to the hospital you're fucked so during like every day they give everyone a cigarette break right i don't smoke so i'm sitting in like this room with all these people smoking so i was like i, I don't want to go to cigarette break today so when they went to cigarette break i went in the room and i just started smashing my face against the bar yeah and i just bloodied my face so they had to take me to the hospital right and then they they knew I beat myself. Brilliant up. idea! I, I had to get to the hospital. You brilliant idea! And then what they do? Give you an antibiotic so that you get uh, your kidneys would be better, or what? Oh, so the the police chief who looked like Japanese Harvey Keitel goes, "I'm I'm gonna take you to the hospital right now." That was a fucking stupid stunt you pulled. Uh-huh. If we get to the hospital and we X-ray you and we find that there's nothing wrong with you, like whatever sentence we're gonna give you is like you're you're fucked. Right. And that whole time, you know, I'm fucking crazy. Right. I'd only been in there for like two weeks at that point. Or like a one week, but I was like, just, I I can't be caged. I'm like, I need to be that, that feeling of having your freedom taken away from you. Bad. I was like, I'm going to escape from this prison. (laughs) And people were like, (laughs) the the, the one guy that spoke English, the Japanese guy, Sonny. I said, I I stuck my head through the bars. I was like, Hey, Sonny, I got to get the fuck. I'm going to, I'm going to break out of jail. He's like, Dave, no one's ever escaped from a Japanese prison. I'm like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. These guys, like, I'm I'm gonna get out of here. And he, and he goes, Dave, you sound retarded right now. I was like, Sonny, if, if I do, like, what do I do? He's like, he gave me his girlfriend's number. He's like, call her. (laughs) This is the guard. No, no, no. This is like another Another prisoner. Oh, another prisoner. Okay. (laughs) So they take me to the hospital. The whole time I'm handcuffed, uh, and another thing on my belt to another cop. Right. Right. And there's two. Two other cops. So it's like it takes a lot of people to take a prisoner to the hospital. So they're already pissed to be doing this. And so they get the they get the X-ray. It find they find out that I'm internally bleeding. They give me antibiotics. They give me all the painkillers, all this shit. And we get back to the police car, and the the cop he doesn't even say sorry or anything. Right. And so the Harvey T- Keitel cop is sitting on the hood of his car smoking because the young cop forgot to get the painkillers from the thing. Wow. So he runs in. So now this is my scenario. I'm in the fucking back of a police car, handcuffed to a very old police officer, <laughs> and there's got, there's a fucking um, keys in the car, and it's just me and him, and the guy's sitting on the hood smoking, and I'm like, if there was ever a time, this it, is it. This, this is, is it. it. This is it. And the guy is old. He's like falling asleep. You could take him out. And he's like, he was saying, talking to me in Japanese, like, eh, you, he, was, <laughs> he was like, you'll, you'll get out of jail. Don't like whatever he was saying. It was, it was all like, yeah, you'll be fine, whatever. And he was like, sort of like drifting off. And I started doing this move, like turning a little bit this way. Yeah. And like my heart's starting to beat because I already can recognize in myself when I'm going to do something crazy. Yeah. I'm like, this shit's going down like right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I go like this and I'm like, it's all playing out in my head. Right. Bash this guy's head through the glass. Right. Uh, take his keys, jump over, go, steal clothes, fucking go to the water, take a boat to Korea. Some, like, it's all... You're, it's you're all, coming it's, up with a plan. It's all going through, and I'm like... <laughs> it's all easy in your head. And, and my heart is about to beat out of my chest, and I'm like, like this, this is happening. And like I go like this, and I'm like... 
<laughs> You're going to kick the glass my out. My feet are shaking. Yeah. And, and my heels, like, I'm like, there's no, like, sort of kick. I have to bash this guy's fucking face into the thing. And I'm like, and then he just, like, he just, like, something he's something. You were going to take your feet and bash his head in. Into the yeah. glass. Yeah, go and ahead. And I'm like, he's old. Like, I might kill him. Right. You know, I just wanted to knock him out. But I'm like, well, I can't take that chance. And I, and I, in my head, I was like, it, this is it. It's, I'm never going to get another chance. You know, they're, 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 Dude, that, you had a three-month sentence, though. No, it was no, not, no. No, they, no they, they were saying, like, 13 years. Oh, whoa. I was like, fuck, you know? Yeah, right. And so just something in his face changed, like he, and, I, and I just started crying. You yeah. couldn't do I just it. Could, you couldn't I, do I, it. I couldn't. I was like, I just couldn't do it. And, uh, and, then, wow. and then I just, like, I just stopped, and then he, I, I was like, you know, like, I ain't no bitch, I ain't crying or whatever. And then he's like, he's like, oh, Dave, like, don't cry. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I almost killed you. <laughs> I'm crying because I didn't kill you. Well, let me, let me give you a plug here. Not that you need it. Uh, you can see David Cho on tour with Die Ant Word. <laughs> Die Ant Word? Die Ant Word is the guys that I was going to play with De uh, Letterman last night. Oh, I see. Oh, it's a, I didn't know who that the fuck. Die Ant Word. De Ant Word. For tour dates, go to, so you're their drummer. No, no, they're, they're just like, hey, come jam with us. Like, from, like, anytime they come to America, I either dance with them or play drums with them. Cool. Uh, Dianteword.com. That's D-I-E-A-N-T-W-O-O-R-D. That's why I'm having trouble with it. Don't miss David on Thumbs Up on Vice. For more info, go to vice.com slash thumbs dash up. That's my hitchhiking show. Ah. That's your, oh, wow. I, hit, uh, I can't do that anymore. He's going out to do Barbara Walters graffiti. Barbara Walters going with him. Yeah, uh, which... You, what are you going to do? You just going to pick some random building and do graffiti, or is she going to line it up? I, I have no idea. Right, I, but you know that whole graffiti thing's kind of freaky too. Like just going up to a building and you get caught, and you know, you know. You've never been with an Asian guy? No. Robin, Robin, would you would you be interested in him? I Robin, mean, you stop. Robin, she's you know what? For a you know what we have in common that's like completely like I had no idea. What? I was in Colombia doing ayahuasca. Really? Like, oh, of course. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> another kooky fucking story. No, but hey, you know what you got to do? You got to fuck Barbara Walters. <laughs> that would be wild. How, Howard, this just naturally happens. I have no control over it. Yeah. When you start fucking as much as I do, yeah, you just start. Wanting to do other shit, so that's not that far away, you know. Like, <laughs> you know? What's the oldest woman you ever fucked? Like Barbara Walters is close to eighty. Look, man, I'm, I'm into it, man. That shit's got to be dried up. Uh, I mean, you're gonna have to work a, that. There's lube. Yeah, you, you got to work that up, oh dude. So you've been with you ever been with Lindsay Lohan or any of those girls? Howard, it's like if if you like, you know how like celebrities come on here and you yeah. ask them like, hey, we saw a picture with you with this girl and this girl, and they're like, no, 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 we're just friends. Yeah. Just. Flip the opposite. Any photograph you've seen of me with anyone, I fuck them. Wow. Ah. Like, <laughs> Good for you. Or, or most of them. I don't want to post some pictures with you. <laughs> Why? Come on, Howard. <laughs> Everyone's going to think you fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't tried any gay sex or anything, have you? Um, uh oh. No. He's I, an artist now. <laughs> yeah, why are you I thinking mean, so hard? Uh, let me, let me hey, Howard, I was thinking about that. Like, you know, I'm sitting here telling you all this bullshit about how I like my freedom and stuff. Yeah. So I have that show thumbs up. Yeah. And it, they started showing yeah, up. Right. For a guy who wants his freedom, why are you putting yourself on TV? Exactly. So yeah. I go, they put that show on Netflix, which is like huge, right? Mm -hmm. And then like, same thing. I'm just chilling at home, jerking off. And then the phone rings and it's Channing Tatum hmm. and it's Mike White. And all these guys <laughs> are like, you're fucking awesome. We got to do a travel show with you. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know? Right. So. I'm I'm like in that sort of New York Times front page scenario again. Like right. you want to show with HBO, Travel Channel, Hulu, like all. And I'm like, good for you. This dude. is fucking awesome. But then I made that decision again. No, I like my freedom. I don't want to do it. So right. I turned it down. And and you hitchhike on the show. That's what you do. Yeah, I, I yeah. hitchhike. I go all. I go all over. The, it's like and I don't you do your art. I don't want to answer to anyone. I like doing right. what I want to do. And it's like, so I I turned that shit down. And then. I was like sitting and thinking about it, and uh, I'm just like, when's the last time there was like not there's Asian people on TV, uh, Asian guys on TV, yeah. But when's the last time an Asian guy had his own show? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah you're right. Not like, when's the last time? And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, the only Asian guys really on TV, George are, Takei, are always gay. All right. So when's, <laughs> when's the last time you had an Asian guy in here that wasn't it's gay? That's true. Yeah. You, you when are did we in, have am Asian the first, guy in here? I think you're the first Asian guy in here. I'm the first Asian here. guy yeah. in here that's not gay, right? Uh, Check I guess out, it's George Takei. Yeah. By the way, David also has a podcast, and I got a feeling it might be really interesting. And it's, uh, <laughs> Korean's gone bad. Korean's gone that's bad. My, that's my bad. Listen, 
It sounds like you're having a lot of fun. Congratulations on being smart enough to take the Facebook stock. You know, people probably thought, gee, the guy didn't take $60,000. What an but asshole. But he didn't need the money, apparently. Well, evidently. And that's the, well, he did back then. Don't forget, he just gotten out of jail. He could have oh, used the money. Oh, he hadn't I, made I, his million? I, 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 I made the money million. more than anything, Robert. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He okay. did a very smart thing. He, uh, he sort he of saw something in, in Sean. That. I bet on the fucking blue Gatorade, Robin. <laughs> I doubled God. down on 18, man. <laughs> wow. He said, give me the three. What's the most you ever won in a gambling situation? Uh, So, like... Every time I go to Vegas now, you know how like last time I said every time I had to win at least around a thousand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now it has to be at least around two, three hundred thousand. Wow! What? what do you bet at a time? Uh, my max bet when you go in when you here's the thing. It's like it's like oh you can I could tell show you how to win a hundred thousand dollars every time. Okay, but you got to roll in with a million. I see. You know, like so. Do you roll in with a million? What do you, you, bet? you what do you in, bet? You roll each in time? with a million. The casino lets you max bet sixty thousand. Right. That's your ceiling. Yeah. So you start low and then you just keep like. Taking little scratches out, you know. And you're telling me you only lost three times in your life, and those three times they were female related. I mm. don't fucking gamble with women. They don't sit next to me. I don't believe in lady luck. You got to keep your I don't, focus. I don't do any of that shit, you know. Right, but in other words, you lose focus when you're sitting there with a woman. I want to take Robin out. Uh, <laughs> take her out. I'm not stopping you. I mean, come did on. Did you? Did you? I, did some, I what? When I came back from Colombia, some people were like, "Are you trying to copy Robin?" It was completely unrelated. Is that right? And it was. How was it for you? It was like. It was the best. Like you have to do it, Howard. <laughs> it was, I'm, not no, going, you, I'm not going. To, first of all, I'm not leaving the country, dude. Howard, and we, secondly, this is what I'm talking I'm about. You can fly Ayahuasca. a shaman here to do it. A uh, shaman, shaman. Uh, listen, Howard, you got to hey, do you, this. Are you a Beetlejuice fan? I love Beetlejuice. Did you draw graffiti of Beetlejuice? I fucking. I, I, I. As soon as as soon as they told me I was going to be on Stern, I was like, I'm going to go fucking do something. What'd you do? I drew Beetlejuice. I wrote, release the poison, and uh, there oh, it is. There it is. Oh, that's <laughs> fabulous. Oh my goodness. Where is that? Uh, that's the that's in Chinatown out here. Oh fuck! I want that. <laughs> I love that. it. <laughs> I'm gonna go photograph. Look at that. those teeth. <laughs> My landlord. That's in Chinatown. But that's what I'm that? saying. Like, when did you do that? I did that two days ago. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Buy me that building so I can... Uh, <laughs> my, land, my landlord was like, hey, Dave, I heard you're going to be in New York. Come by and... It says, bad as can, release the poison, and it's a fantastic <laughs> graffiti of Beetlejuice. Yeah. I did that in five minutes. That's it's amazing. You motherfucker, you're good. <laughs> I could talk to you all day, David. You're, you're fascinating. Fucking guy. have me back on, Howard. I all right, I'll, I'll check back in. Always. With you. Check back Calm on. down. Howard, can I bring some shamans and bring some ayahuasca up in no, the He's not going to no, do I'm ayahuasca. As soon as he sees what, what, it, he's going to. David, I don't have a constitution for it. I'll be sick the rest of my life. You know how you he felt when you were. never do it. You know when you were smacked in the kidneys and it felt weird? Yeah. Uh, that's how it would feel for me. Listen. Put your sights on Robin. Fuck her and marry her. Robin, and come on. Let's go out. Let's do some fucking shit, dude. Let's I'm not that Robin. much fun. <laughs> you love JD. You're a big JD fan? I, I, I fucking, like, every time he comes on and you guys play that music, it's like awesome. It's the best, right? It's the JD. Best. Yeah, you got to help him out, man. You got to give him some pussy and you got to teach him how when to make you guys some money. Had, what was the dude, Ryan Phillippe? Phil Phil yeah, Phil yeah, he and tried. he's like, I'm going to, I'll fucking get JD late. Are you kidding me? Well, what's your Take plan? him out. How can you get him laid? How can JD doesn't get laid at all? And uh, hardly any. Yeah, I saw him in the hall. He's got the long hair going and shit. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't have a rap. He's like, uh, 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 I mean, doesn't everyone that's like related to you somehow get laid just from the association? He, he, well, he does get laid once in a while. JD, what the fuck? He bro? doesn't. Hey, he doesn't look that bad. Does hello, he? hello. How I'll are fuck you? JD. <laughs> David no, says he I don't can go, get go that way. Laid. Sorry. He I don't care how much money you have. He says he can get you laid. <laughs> Huh? He says he can get you late. Jay, you, you. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Stern, good luck. Stern guys, Stern guys love Vegas, right? Right. You got you come to Vegas once he in a while. He loves Vegas. Yeah, I'm going to Vegas for America's Got Talent in a couple of... Uh, I'll, 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 I'll take about, you out. I'll, I'll take you out. All right, I'll take you out there. <laughs> what, let, what, let David see how you roll. <laughs> what, what did you think of Howard's answer when of the his reason of like not needing to have that experience of having one nut in each mouth? <laughs> oh, uh, have you had that? I, I have not had that, and I would relish that uh, opportunity <laughs> one time. You're looking down, and you see two eyes, like two eyes looking up at you. Have you avoided, have you then, avoided STDs? Are yeah, you clean? I, I'm fucking wrapped up that shit. I'm all good. These girls got to wear some. I mean, they, you know, aren't you afraid they can give uh, you some? Of course, uh, I wrap that shit up for. You, you know, wrap it up. Yeah. Not for a blowjob. For blowjobs? For a blowjob, too, yeah. Really? You, you, I got you, wrap, this, you put I, it in a rubber? I got this expensive Japanese shit that it feels, it, <coughs> you know, you can't tell, but whatever. It's, Good for you. You know. Uh, David, listen. God bless you. Go and check out uh, David at koreansgonebad.com. <laughs>
Check out David on tour with uh, Antword. The Antword? The Antword.com. And oh, thumbs and up on Vice. More info, go to vice.com slash thumbs dash up. The Dion Ward album just dropped, and also I'm going to play with Pillow Fight, my, my next band thing. Good That's, for you, man. You're having a blast. Yeah, I, great to meet you. Congratulations on being smart enough to take that Facebook deal. And this is a guy... We'll all be watching the IPO now to see exactly I'll, how much you what, are what, worth. Yeah, what do you think <laughs> it's like going to be worth? What, Based on your guess, what do you think it's going to be worth when that uh, IPO comes out? Um, your shares. Well, here's the other thing that that we haven't touched on. Everyone's like... That's how much it's going to be worth, whatever, all this shit. Who, who didn't, like, you've heard all my shit now about yeah. freedom, yeah. hedging my bets, I never lose, shit like that. Right. Who did, who, who's to say I haven't sold it already? Oh, no, uh, you sold, you didn't sell it. You sold it already? I didn't say that. I said, who's to say I didn't sell it already? So you don't have the stock. I didn't say that. Well, why are you saying that then? I'm just saying, like, I don't fucking like people knowing how much money I have. Oh, you want to, you want to. You want to be one of the people. <sighs> Fuck. No, I, whatever. You didn't huh? tell me the truth. Did you sell no, your no, stock? No, no, I tell you the <clears> truth. <throat> tell me the truth. I'll did you, you the... sell your stock? I'll tell you what I did, Howard. Go ahead. And I actually thought about you and the way you make decisions. Like, you have three daughters, right? That's right. Do you have a son? Are you going to have, 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 have a kid have with Beth? Uh, uh, we don't, we don't want to have a kid. Can I have your son? Well, it's just, you, you, you know, if you didn't sell your stock, he could be my son. No, you know, you know how you know, I need a son who could support well, me. Well, you know, you know, I'm not going to be after you for your money. So right. it's like, you know, how like Angelina and Brad like adopt an Asian kid. You want me to adopt you? I want to be the prince of all media. You don't think that'll hurt your Isn't family? That, I would love that if I you wanna, adopted I him. I want to fucking and you made know, a big I'm potty announcement. Trained. I'm still not good at wiping my ass either. I need to see how many shares you own on Facebook, and then I'll talk to you about it. Okay. Um, Put it this way, Howard. I fucking... Um, do you still own your Facebook stuff? Yes, I do. You do? All of it? All of it? No, not all of you it. You sold some? Mm. Of course. When? Because I'm smart. It's Why did a, you sell it? Be, like, re, you really going to ask me that question? Yeah. When did you sell it? it every, do you remember how big MySpace was? Yeah. Right? It was fucking huge. Uh. And Facebook was a fucking joke, right? So to hedge your bet. To hedge my... I mean, I still have... What did you sell your portion for? Uh, the, the portion? How much of it did you sell? Off? 50%? No, not 50%. 20%? But I was like, I'm going to make sure I'm set up, right? 20%? I don't know the percentage. I sold millions. I'm already, I made... How I, much did you make on the sale without selling, you know, you didn't sell everything? Um, In other words, did you sell it for the right amount? I sold it for the right amount. What'd you sell it for? Uh, I, I can't talk about that stuff. Over 50 million? It's, I, I'm doing okay. Over 50 million or under? This affects your adoption. <laughs> over 50 or under. Howard, am I the prince of all media? Not yet. Over 50 <laughs> or under. David, over 50 or Can under. Can I have Robin's hand in marriage? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Robin's evaluating right now. Over 50 or under when you sold the I was portion. sitting there looking at the, all this bullshit. I'm like, to have millions, like, and you can live a good life and take right. care of whatever. Smart. But then when you go into the 50, 100, like, it, it's, it's that question of, like when people look at like really wealthy people's money, they're like, "Hey, he's worth a billion. Oh, he's worth ten billion." At that point, isn't it just a fucking mo money mo? How problems? much percentage of your stock did you sell already? A lot, and I still have a lot. So do you have at least fifty percent of the stock? I mean, I still have millions, hundreds of millions, of hundreds dollars. of millions yeah, of dollars still, in shares. Yeah. All right, then you, I'll adopt you. <laughs> <laughs> you are worthy. Right, there you go. Uh, let me tell you something. But can't you see that announcement? That would be so funny. Howard's my fucking... Howard adopted a career. How, Howard's my dad now. He just fucking said it. You <laughs> all it and then you show up with David. <laughs> Howard, how many people listen to the show? 24 billion 24 people. 24 fucking billion people <laughs> just heard that Howard by dad right. job. It's as good as done. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, I'll take care of you, Dad. Uh, thank you. I'm not putting you in a home, nothing. The, the men are the <laughs> You're my son. You take good care of me. I love Korean sons. I always Korean's wanted gone to. bad. Uh, That's my shit. Good for you. Uh, David, you're a fabulous interview. Good guy. Uh, congratulations on your artwork, your Facebook, your Can I your plug band. My, the son of my uncle's nephew? Go ahead. Harry Kim, a.k.a. Guam Cruz. He's my partner on Thumbs Up. He goes everywhere with me. Spent 10 years making a movie about me. It's out on iTunes now. DirtyHandsMovie.com. I'll all watch right. it. All right. David, thanks. For I got all shit for all you guys. Oh, Whatever. that's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, your new name, as my son is, Kim Jong Stern. <laughs> <laughs> no more David Cho. <laughs> David Cho. Man, think about it. Hey, you know what? Don't give me 60 grand. Give me some Facebook stock. There you go. All those years ago. Smart man. Some might have thought, ah, hey, that's crazy. Give me but my 60. Off.
I love this story. Now go there and uh, and, and, and fuck Barbara Walters. <laughs> hey. Hey. Telling interview, my friend. Howard, I love you, man. This is such a hey. Love like, you. You're great on the air. We got to keep tabs on you. Great. Good <laughs> job. Really, good. Really, really well done, man. Pleasure I mean, I love you. So beautiful person. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Great. David, no. It's like a water okay, water. tissue in the corner. <laughs> well, I'm very honored uh, that uh, that uh, you gave us your interview and. Yeah, fuck that. I don't want to talk to any of these other people. Now I push up underneath my balls real hard. Is that it? Under your balls, you you. Well, I got to the point where I trained it, so I don't have to do that anymore. And it's like, I could, not a, I could I, fuck I all eat, night. I got years of training. Today. Yeah, you could fuck forever, and it feels like fantastic. What's the uh, name of the Japanese calendar? It's, <laughs> I don't, it, it's like 13 bucks or something for like one condom. Uh, and it's like, reuse it. Yeah, you're like, what Why the? is it so good? It just feels, you can't tell that oh, you're you wearing it. Wearing it's one. unbelievable. It's fucking awesome. 13 bucks, though. Coming up hard. <laughs> show up. Yeah, I don't know. Fred. I'm going to stick with the one. What's up, Fred? You're awesome, man. Good to see you. I say good luck. Summer. We don't need it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got enough good luck. I, uh, I can make, David. at this point, I can make like like a hundred bad decisions. You got to man. Dave, you'll still be all right. <laughs> David. But don't. Best of luck. <laughs> Howard, I, I'm serious. I want to be back on the show. All right. Okay. Don't, believe me, we're going to stay in touch with you. Robin. So how'd it go? How'd you, uh, how'd, uh... I, I want to go back in there. I want to hang out with them. I want to do the news. I'll do the yeah. wrap-up show. <laughs> it, it seemed like it went pretty well. And as, as a super fan, uh, was everything you hoped for? It's like, I, like, it, it's sort of like all the shit I was talking about in there. They're like, everyone in the world wants to talk to you right now. And I'm like, I don't want to talk to them. It's like, they're like, what can't you buy? I'm like, I can't buy my way to the Howard Stern show. I'll just, I'm like, here's, I'm like, I just wanted to talk to Howard. <laughs> that was it. And I did. And it was awesome. Well, yeah, I guess you got adopted by him as well. I'm the fucking, what a Kim Jong, I'm, I'm the prince of all media. I'm going to fucking say that shit. You heard him say that, right? <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but Tim wanted yeah. me to just double check with you. You know, David, who was just in here, yeah. he wants to do a painting on the, in the green room. Tim wanted to make sure that was okay with us. I think it's, uh, I, as long as Sirius doesn't have a problem, it seems to me that guy's a How major artist. How do we take artist. the wall, though, when we're done? Uh, yeah, <laughs> if I was serious, I'd hold on to that. Uh, it would be an honor okay. for me to have a David uh, uh, thing. Sure. Just check that it's okay with the company. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't think we own this. They rent this right. space. Right, but I think we'd be. Uh, yeah. He's already late. doing it. Late, yeah. Oh, there he goes. Boy, he's talented, huh? Look at him go. Such confidence. Well, I wonder what that's going to be. Oh, man. Robin, I think it's me. It's a giant whale. I feel like the size of a whale. Looks like he's painting a whale. Hey, make sure you put that on Howard TV as he paints. I'm absolutely fascinated by that. Oh, look, Kim, Kim John. Jong. Stern. He's putting his name. That's his name now. Kim, I named him that. He's my son. What is that he painted? A whale. Fucking love you, sort, Howard. Huh? There he is. He's good, man. Good for him. Man, that whole Facebook story is so fantastic. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. One of the Thank ones you. it Thanks. worked out for. Kim Jong Stern, that's my dad. Or so that's me. Bad, uh, good Morning America. Like, the, and, but he was busting their balls. He was like, hey, if you want me so bad, um, I'll come on, but Barbara Walters has to interview me. And they go, how dare you? She interviews <laughs> the president of you know, the Syria or something. I think David also has artwork hanging in the White House, believe it or not, Is that for right? Obama. He did some stuff for Obama. And, um, yeah, yeah. And then, like, he was like, they were like, okay, we go, we'll give you Barbara Walters. He goes, all right. <laughs> I only get Barbara Walters, though, if she comes out and does graffiti with me. And they were like, uh, no way, Barbara Walters is not, doing, not going out to well, sure paint enough, on she's, walls. She's going to go do graffiti. <laughs> they made, Barbara, we're trotting you out there. So proud of my son. Look at him. He just painted the wall. <laughs> good for him. Oh, good boy. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fred left to beat David yeah, we're up. We're such um, rebels. See if it's okay with Sirius. <laughs> no. Hey, listen, it's their building. It's, it's I'm me. just saying, we're not rebels at all. Right. Oh, no, no. I'm, I check with authority. That's just it. I interview rebels. We're I'm, not going to the Japanese prison. That's right. I behave myself. <laughs>
Thirty. Uh, Cordy Cox. You know, Cougar Town's back. You know, everything's perfect with her and David. They're best friends. Their relationship is better than ever now that they're separated. Except for the farting. You know, I remember we talked about... I couldn't find the story, but you, you had talked about her. how she was getting jealous that David's life was... He had moved on. She, um, she freaked out. Right. I'm going to bring that up. Are her and Jennifer still as good of friends as they always were? Yeah, there was some report I saw in a tabloid right. that they're not friends anymore. Right. So Krista, there's not much. Just that, you know... Photo you, shoot. You're going to talk about the photo shoot. I would, I would love for her to give me permission to, like, release some of the pictures. They're really good. I mean, she talked about naked issue. I don't say. <laughs> I don't talk about it. My two girlfriends are on the phone. Courtney Cox, no longer Arquette, and Krista Miller. Courtney and Krista are best friends. Courtney used to be best friends with uh, Jennifer Aniston, but no more. Really? Yeah, that's over. Hey, Courtney, hold on. I'm going to lock you in. Hey. I'm locking Krista. Let's see. Krista, you there? Hi, guys. Hey. How Good do you morning. change best friends? Court- I wouldn't ha- I wouldn't stand for it anymore. <laughs> Courtney, uh, Jennifer Aniston and you have had a falling out. Isn't that true? <laughs> Tell me about it. Is it true or not? No. Isn't it true that... Jennifer, how are you, by the way? I was going to say, hey, how are you? <laughs> yeah, it's good to say hello first. I thought. Hey, by the way, before we get to Courtney, let's get to Krista for a second. Mm-hmm. Krista, you said on the Greg Fitzsimmons show that you and I did a photo shoot together, so I'm not talking out of school. Right. And you said it was sexy. It was very sexy. Right. And it were, they are, you know, it's a big, uh, first of all, hi, Robin. Hi, Fred. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Um, they're the best pictures I have had anyone take of me in my life. What do you think of that, Robin? I think that's amazing. I am and a great photographer, is what Chris is trying to say. <laughs> I saw the pictures, Howard. They're very hot. You like them, Courtney? Oh, my God. She's gorgeous. Would you like, like to do a photo shoot? Courtney, I'd like to shoot you, quite <laughs> frankly. I, well, I'd like you to shoot me. You know, I mean, with whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, Chris is way too comfortable. <laughs> I mean, Chris is more comfortable than I am. Yeah, Krista made you uncomfortable. Well, well, first of all, let me say, yes, Krista did a photo shoot with me, but my wife was there, of course. Of course. And uh, although I asked her to leave four times, <laughs> she would not. Howard, it seemed like you demanded Beth would leave, and then she said, no, I think I'll stay. Yeah. No, yeah. She, it, it, was, it was a very, it was, besides the fact that it was an incredible afternoon, um, I thought it was really fun, and we, we Beth made me feel comfortable, and I just felt like I could tell already because I could see them in your camera that the pictures were pretty, and it relaxed me, and I I felt very at ease. Krista wanted well, me to you, do. Do either of you go ahead? Want to describe these pictures? Krista, describe. Well, hmm, I mean, I would describe. I, I, this is really Krista's. Uh, I'm, I'm taking her lead on this. Do either of you, yeah. Krista, could answer. Krista's well, husband, Bill Lawrence, who's a writer on. He was the creator of Cougar Town. Yes. Along, I guess, with Courtney, right, Courtney? No, I did not create it, but um, yes, um, Bill Lawrence and Kevin Beagle created it. Okay. Uh, he said to me, "Hey, it would be really cool if you took pictures of my wife." Uh huh. He wanted sexy naked. pictures. No. Well, he wanted sexy pictures of his wife. So she was naked. I was right. Um, no, uh, well, I mean, you didn't see the bottom half, but <laughs> she looked really gorgeous. And yeah, she was. Crazy. Did she? You, and Beth had all these cool um, necklaces, and the one that's super sexy is in black and white, but shot beautifully in black and white. Uh-huh. And Beth helped with makeup, and Beth had like. Sexy bras. I mean, yeah, let's make it so- clear how many times we can say Beth was there. Because <laughs> if Beth wasn't there, like maybe something weird could have gone down. But Krista, <laughs> yes, will you ever? I mean, they're your pictures, as far as I'm concerned. Even though I took them, um, will you ever release some of them for me to release? Well, will you give me permission to show them to my audience? Uh, I would. I I think you could show them. I think the one that um, the the one with the the uh, necklace in the front, the black and white one, we could put somewhere else if we're right. going to show it. It should be maybe in Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think the rest of them would be? Yeah, I think the rest of them are fine. Even you know which one I love that one um, of me looking to the side in the little black bra that. That Beth had. Yeah. <laughs> and what about with the one where you're laying on your back? But yeah, I love that one. That's going at the beach. Do you know that one with the 
blue. I, th- I think there are a couple you could release. You know, the best um, Bill's Dilemma is the really sexy one that he loves. We have three kids that swarm all over our house, and we're trying to figure out. He wants to maybe put one in his closet and put behind, that's by his bathroom, and put behind um, shirts hanging up so that he can uh, open it and see it. The yeah, they're, they're very erotic, these photos. Yeah, they're erotic. They are. They're sexy. Um, I have quite an eye for this kind of thing. <laughs> you know that twice I've been at home and Bill's been at work twice, and I've emailed him the picture because I, sh- you know, I didn't give him to him till Christmas. Right. Oh. Yeah. And he um, didn't even speak to me and just drove right home. And he wow. banged you, right? Yeah. 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 See, if I photograph Courtney, maybe she get back with David. Uh, she, I don't know that she wants that. She's so. gonna come visit me this summer. Good. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do that. Well, book me. I'm very busy. <laughs> Maybe I'll you s- could do Beth, Courtney, and me sitting all together, at, you know, on the beach. Yeah, yeah, I would like to do that. I have an idea of what we can do. Yep. Yeah, that'd be good. Now, getting to you, Courtney. <laughs> yes, Howard. <laughs> okay, I think it's time to have an adult discussion about what's going on with you vis-a-vis men. I, I need I, help. You're right. You know, Courtney... You're a gorgeous woman. I mean, dare I say, I've told David this. If I was single, I'd be right on the phone to you, and I'd bang you. Thank you. And uh, you're welcome. (laughs) I keep telling her that. (laughs) But when are we going to I was just talking about you the other day. I did an interview for USA Today, and we were talking about David and talking on the radio to you. And I was like, you know, I love Howard. Howard destroys me sometimes, but no, I know he really likes me. I really love you. And I said, that's what he does. It's just, I said, I'm such a fan. I love listening to him. But I've loved you since the Bruce Springsteen video. Yeah. It's sexy. Yeah, but you had a big problem with her <laughs> Not going to... Not the Bruce Springsteen video. Yes, you were. Very uh, cute. Yeah, you were uh, way cute. Yeah. You had a big problem with her going to Dancing with the Stars every Oh, yeah. What's the deal? I wanted to take you. You would have had a ball. No, that was horse shit. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, that was the most fun I've had. I felt that was like such a great family time for me and Coco to be watching... Her dad, he was so great on it. It was really fun. I really, there was a point I think you were coming into town, and I so wanted to sit next to you. Did you know that I went to dinner with David and the new girlfriend? I heard, yeah. Now, okay, here's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. That you're fronting a lot, that you, you did bang your two male co-stars. Both of them? Yeah, and that there's... (laughs) And I mean, I, let's put, let's start simply. Courtney, you still holding to the fact you still haven't had sex since your marriage with David? I'm holding to it. Bullshit. Okay. You haven't been with. I hear man. Fred laughing in the background. No, but but Courtney, I mean, let, you're not lying to me. I'm not lying to you. You're saying you haven't had a man since David. I've not had a man since David. You swear on your child's life. That's pretty intense. Mm. I wouldn't swear on anybody's yeah, life. There you go. Like so that's so it's a lie. So no, no, I don't do that in my child's life. It's my, oh my mm. God. Krista, she's lying, right? Mm. You know, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I know so. How okay. do you know so? Much? Because she's a woman. She's mm. sensual. She she got out of a marriage well, with David because obviously this? she wanted it from someone else. Why is she saying this? Uh, because she, she, she's got a daughter. She doesn't want to upset David for some bizarre reason, even though David's out banging his brains out. <laughs> I don't get it, Courtney. I'm having a why, why is it so fuzzy? Yeah, why, what's, whose what phone is, is this? There's a fuzziness. Uh, uh, it just started <laughs> happening. I mean, I am in bed with Krista. But I feel that Courtney is holding up one of those machines that makes, makes sound noise. so she can get off the phone <laughs> oh, yeah. quickly. I can't hear you, Howard. Yeah. Um, I don't care. I'm not hanging up. This is why we need your help, because I said to Courtney... He, um, she needs to date someone like you. She needs to date someone formidable. Thank you. And that's our big uh, discussion. So I, I've actually said, been against her dating any actors pretty boys. or any. Yeah, I, I said, yeah. why don't you just be, you know, figure out what's going on? Yeah, but date a powerful need, man. Yeah. Don't you someone? have someone for her, Krista? Yeah, I'm, me. I'm, try, I'm making her um, come. We have dinner. You know, we're having a dinner with people that are, you know, successful. And mm-hmm. I said, you got to come. And Who's on the meet- list, Krista, for Courtney to meet at the big dinner? Well, you know, we're supposed to sit with J.J. Abrams. But J.J.'s married. I know, but he's got to have friends that are formidable. Yeah, but who are you bringing there so that she can kind of, like, hook up with? Well, I'll have to, you know, tell Allie Wentworth <laughs> to tell J.J. <laughs> To bring someone great for Courtney, we we have in uh, L.A. We have a uh, 
wealthy a uh, preppy guy who's smart and plays tennis and is great, and uh, Courtney's a little yes. nervous to meet him. Why? Because he's too normal, I think. Uh, oh, she needs a quirky. We already tried quirky showbiz that didn't work. type. Yeah, <laughs> that that worked out great. And he's in love with her, and he's appropriate. How old? Well, he's forty-nine. Okay. Yeah. Courtney, what do you think? I don't know, guys. What are you afraid of? Well, you know, I know this doesn't sound normal to you, but I'm really not ready. Like, I'm still emotionally, you know, it's hard. I, I've, I was in a marriage for a very long time. And just because, you know, we ended up growing apart for reasons of we just led separate lives and we have different compatibility issues, but I'm just not ready to, I don't know. My, I'm just still not, not quite ready. There. Wait a second. You're telling me no guy has asked you out? No guy has asked me out. I'm not saying I'm not ready to have a makeout session. I'm just not ready to, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, let me meet the guy, but I'm nervous. it just makes me nervous. <laughs> I'm not great. I don't love to go out. I'm not, I don't mean with guys. I just don't love to go out in general. I I'm like coming out to L.A. Like to I'm coming out to L.A. next week. I know a guy for you. You want me to hook you up? But he's yeah. not going to stand around while you have all kinds of fucking emotional issues. I mean, we got, you got to get, you're going to have to put out a little bit. I do have some emotional issues. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're going to have to really get past that. <laughs> Robin's right. Robin, he's for you, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah, why, is it, why is it Robin? with a, What's the same problem with Robin? Why is oh, it Robin? Robin? I don't know. She's so ready for love. I am? I don't know. I can't explain Robin's situation. <laughs> I just think she hasn't met a great guy, honestly. Robin, I think you're ripe. You're gorgeous. You're not She's evaluating men anymore. Right. Uh, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> but, Courtney, so what's the hang-up? Like, I mean, are you horny at all? Seriously. Or you have no sexual feelings? No, I have sexual feelings. I mean, there's ways to deal with that. But I just, um... That's hot. I don't know. I mean, I, haven't, when I just go to work, and I come home, and now the show just wrapped. And so... I don't, I mean, now I guess it's time for me to get out there, but it's not easy to meet people. Is David, uh, maybe, me. is David like hanging around a lot and like sort of fulfilling the husbandly duties in a sense, except for sex? And maybe that's the problem. And I've heard that but maybe, you know what, that's probably not, um, he doesn't hang around a lot, but yeah, I'm really close with him. And, um, did you have a hard time when you met, when you heard about his girlfriend? Yeah. Oh. You're freaking out, right? Well, I mean, I also met her. She's really nice. She's really pretty. She's very... I didn't mean to meet her. Looks She's like talking. you, right? <laughs> what? She looks like you. You know, it was the sun was going down. Um, they were pulling into the house to drop off Coco, and I tried to call David a ton of times saying, don't get there before me. Let me get inside the house. And I pulled up to the driveway, and he was turning into it. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Coco's like, Mommy, 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 meet Christina. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> How hard was that? But she was really nice. She was. She had a good sense of humor. She was nice. She's very tall. I'm not. Were you um, flipping out, though? That very young. Are you, flipping, not. are you flipping out that Coco, like, is Coco, so into her? Coco really likes her. They have fun. Yeah. No, I'm not. I, I mean, obviously, I want... I want very close to be in happy. age, Coco and Christina. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they like to play together. They have uh, play dates together. You know, you could still get David back in a second if that's what you want. But you've got to make that commitment. I don't commitment. know that that's true. Uh, that's yeah. True. Yeah, I said that too, Howard. I agree with you. Yeah. Do you want him back at all? Make the decision already. Hmm. Um, Do you want him back? I mean, this is awkward because I actually probably feel like his girlfriend's listening and <laughs> who cares? the other millions of people. Well, let's the Courtney. I mean, let's there, I, I mean, there there is a huge part of me that I mean, I miss a huge part of my life with David. There's no question, but you know, I I feel like right now our relationship is probably better than it would be if we lived together. It's definitely better than it used to be. We communicate better. We have much more respect for each other. We we listen. You know, you you married to someone for a long time. You. You have resentments you don't even talk about. You just go, oh, whatever. You know why I get confused? You know why I get confused by you? Because you talk so diplomatically. You want him back, but maybe you don't want him back. Well, it's hard. Like, I can't, I mean, when I see you, I'm going to talk to you about all of it. I can't wait for a private conversation with you. It's going to be good. that you won't share with us. Would you sob on my shoulder and I'll hold you? And then maybe yeah, something will you happen. To hold me, I'll cry like a baby. Hold yeah. me like a baby. I want to. I want to put you on my lap and hold you like. <laughs> you know what kills me? I mean, if I was single, I think I could get her pretty much in line and, and get oh, her. Oh, you marry? You are so Courtney's type. You I know, except her. for my gunt. 
Oh, stop. <laughs> I mean, I admit I'm not physically attractive, but I'm emotionally. You are Howard. I could be there for her emotionally. <laughs> You know what? That's the photo shoot. Courtney, like, naked crying on my shoulder. <laughs> well, who's taking it. the picture? Who cares? I will do it. <laughs> yeah, Krista can do it with Beth. She's a good photographer. Listen to me. This is so confusing to me. You are like an enigma. Are you close to Jennifer Aniston still, or has there been distance? No, we're, real, we're very close. Having dinner with her tonight. Oh, you are? Yeah. I'm like the only Sorry. person not having dinner with her. <laughs> I know 20 people who are now friends with Jennifer Aniston. I'm the only one who isn't. You haven't made that connection. Uh, no. And so, if David is truly not your man, you haven't had sex in over a year with anybody, you're starting to lean toward going on a date, and no one has asked you out. Do no. I have that right? You have it right. Well, if she's not me, going you out... Have it right. And I guess you're pleasuring yourself with your vibrator. No, not so much. <laughs> Just your hand. She, by the way, she's itching the side of her T-shirt right now, and one little nerp is falling out of her T-shirt. <laughs> oh, are you guys together? In yeah, we're, we're in bed together in bed. Mm. And what are you wearing? Courtney's wearing a little, like, red, oh, a little red T-shirt. Red. It's not a t-shirt. It's like a little... It's, she's saying it's a nightgown, but it comes right to the end of her underwear. And Krista, what are you wearing? I have a little, like, uh, little thermals on the bottom and uh, a little t-shirt. Kiss each other. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to... We were. <laughs> are you guys attracted to each other at all? Is, is anybody into that? We're not into girls. If I was, I would be attracted to Courtney. Why are you yeah, sleeping Krista there? would be my type for sure. Why are you sleeping there? Because we wanted to be, we wanted to be near each other when we talk to you. Wow! Let's massage each other. Let's start with that. <laughs> That's hot, huh? These two in bed, <laughs> sexy, Trying very, very here. sexy. Wow! I've been up since two thirty. And and Courtney, you've made out with guys, but you haven't done anything else. Yeah, I've kissed. Who'd you kiss? One of I'm those co-star about. dudes, right? All of them, even my son. No. I would, though. I love that kid. <laughs> yeah, it would be the... weird. It'd be weird. I'm not going to kiss him, but I do love him. <laughs> do you have a crush on anyone? If he was 20 years old, uh, well, no, like 10 years older, I'd make out with him. Do you have a crush on anyone? No, no crushes. And this weird limbo that you and What's David... What's happening with the fuzz? I can't... I can't... Wait a second. Listen to me. Yeah. This weird limbo that you and David are in. What's We're going... not in limbo. No, He's no, no. Fi... A really nice girlfriend. Yeah, but what's going on financially? You guys haven't divorced, so... I'm worried you're going to go through all your money. Me too. No. Uh. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean. No, that's not an issue. That's all. We're all good there. Everything's no, you're fine. not. We're not in limbo in that way. We're not. Actually, we're not in limbo. Who pays for who? I mean, you have way. I don't know. Does David have money of his own? Yeah. He does? I mean, David's fine. Everything's done. We're all good. Yeah, David. What do you fine. mean we're, we're all good? What do you mean it's no, all it's just, done? That's not an issue. I mean, David gave me a lot of money. We settled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've settled, and you've had to pay out David, right? Um, you know, I, I, that's it's not, yes. I mean, no, just everything's good. I can't. That's something I don't feel comfortable talking. About. What do you? I figured you were good for about eighty million. So now you're worth forty. I know. Why do people think I'm so loaded? Because I mean, you were on Friends. I know, but I was on Friends, and we only made the big bucks the last year and a half. And I mean, if you saw my home, which I hope you come over sometime. I'm coming there. Are you I'd love to see when it come out. Yeah, I have to get out there and see what's doing. You know. Yeah, you need to check it all out. I, I think that'd be pretty good. I could uh, see what's doing. Well, over there. I don't know if the house is worthy of you. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what I just wanted to ask Courtney. She what said, I'm trying to say is I'm a real estate person, and I I spin it. So it's not like. Yeah, Courtney, and then I didn't have Jennifer Aniston's career after Friends. I wasn't in 95 movies. How about none? Do what you? About, what uh, about all of the um, syndication and the DVD? Yeah, I mean, you make a little bit of money every year, but it's not, you know, it's not even close to what you think. You're not worth $80 million? Uh, well, I'm not worth, but I don't have it. <laughs> Would you, hey, if Brad Pitt... She doesn't have it now, if, that's for sure. <laughs> if Brad Pitt asked you to do a movie, would you do it? Yeah. You would? Of course. Even though he betrayed Jennifer? I think that they're okay with, I mean, I don't, I don't think, you know, I have a different feeling about all of that, but... Um, you know, I, I would talk to Jennifer about it, but I know she'd be fine. I mean, there's no animosity. It's been a long time. Everyone's moved on. She's happy. He's happy. 
Yeah. Krista, what is Courtney worth? I I think hundred. A hundred million. And yeah. so she had to give David half. That's $50 million. No, yes. they must have had a prenup, don't you think? Did you have a prenup? Um, <laughs> I can't hear you, Howard. <laughs> Courtney, did you have a prenup or not? I did not. I vain. Uh, I know. Yeah, that's why you need, a ma- you need a more mature. You know what? That's not, you guys, you have to understand, we're not, people don't understand the love that we have for each other. You know, I, I, you know, we go to therapy sometimes, and my therapist says, I've never seen two people this fond of each other. We really just care. No one would ever try to screw anybody. We are... We Wait never a have second. An like that. Yeah. I want his happiness. He wants mine. Because you're so generous. That's yeah, why but, there's okay, no good. issue. And that's why he wouldn't marry someone who wasn't, and I wouldn't marry someone who was greedy. So, so did you have to give up half of your money? I mean, we're not... Selling properties. No, but you did know. you have to give up half your money? No. Really? I don't believe really? her. <laughs> no, I promise that's that. That I, I won't swear you on know, any lives. Howard, D- David came. Absolutely not. David Go. came and worked on uh, Cougar, Town. Cougar Town. As how awkward was that? Not at all. You're the only one who's awkward with him. Yeah, but Courtney... You don't want me to go support him. <laughs> Something went down with those two... About it. Other than the fact that every day I would hear, Howard can't believe you're there. You just look like an idiot. You just walk away, you fool. I'm just like... Courtney. I did look like an idiot. You know why? Because I'm sitting behind Cher. And she comes, and Chaz does such a great job that night. And he was so happy that his mom was there, and he performed. And I was behind her, and I had to turn away because I was crying harder than she was. Right. That's the weird part. I am a little weird, but you know what? You'd want that same support if you were on Dancing with the Stars, and I will be there, Howard. Courtney. Yes, dear. If I was married to David and it was over, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go watch him on Dancing with the Stars. It looked like you wanted to be on TV, which I know you don't care about. But 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 it was I ridiculous. Not, that, I, that is true. I do not need to. I don't want or need to. Be yeah, on you're TV on TV anymore. enough. Exactly. No, but what about? I mean, if you and I were married, I promise you. Oh, you would have a glorious time with me. We'd have a great time. First of all, work out for some reasons, or you know, we would be friends, and I would come and support you. No, you wouldn't be friends with me, honey. (laughs) Yes, I would. No, you trust me. One wife that we would be great friends. No, we wouldn't. But you would be wild about me. (laughs) Uh, That I know. I already. You'd be tied up in my bed. (laughs) You would. First of all, I don't leave bed, so you'd be happy because because Courtney likes wants to stay home. She's like a shut in. Homebody. Yeah, and I'm I'm a a homebody. I hate leaving the house. And I know she wants a guy to talk to her. Nobody, Beth has to shut me the fuck up. That's right. You talk. I'm like a woman. I talk the entire time. I pause TV shows to have discussions about Courtney, them. you'd be so happy. You don't want to go to a movie with me because I want to understand every moment of the movie. I just want to talk about it. Oh, honey, you'd understand everything. <laughs> okay, well, if I didn't have so much respect for Beth, I would be, uh, and I, I don't know what I'd do. I would date you, and all you'd have to do is... Maybe have sex with me three times a week. <laughs> you know. Right. You could do that. In the beginning, maybe some more. Yeah. Yeah. And the lovemaking would be wild. Because I'd be like, hey, I'm in bed with Courtney Cox. I really want to turn her on. <laughs> You'd really work on I wonder how long you're going to be saying that. Like, I wonder, I mean. Oh, that would be big. That would be big. How tough of you? Oh, it would be great. Yeah, I'd be on top of you. I'd be like, hey. Like, I'd be, I know I'd be banging Courtney and go, shit. I'm banging Courtney this Cox. Courtney Cox. I'm some fucking asshole from Roosevelt, Long Island, who's banging Courtney Cox. Look at me. And and Howard, she's just so stunning and smart and great. Take both of you take off your clothes right now. I just did. I command yes. you. <laughs> Courtney, why is it fuzzy? I'm oh my out. god, it's getting worse. I don't know. It just goes away sometimes. I feel Courtney's making that happen so she can get off the phone. <laughs> she has a hold on, I'm going to put you on hold. I don't know what my hold music is. All right, go ahead. Lines. Put me on hold. Okay. Um, I think your clothes are interfering. It's static electricity. <laughs> Do you know when David came on, the the uh, funny thing was is that I was supposed to be flirting with him during the scene. Yeah. And, you know, Bill never lets me. Oh, dear. <laughs> we can't hear a thing. Hey, wait. I'm going to call you guys back. Is that possible? Call us back. All right. Do, Gary, do you have numbers on them? <laughs> she, this is a woman oh, worth a hundred. Yeah, she's worth a hundred million dollars. And she can't get a good phone. Christy, you still there? Yeah. Yeah. How come your phone's okay and you're in the same house? I don't know. I'm on a. I'm on a. 
different line. All right, she's gonna. Ch- Courtney's gonna call in the number on a different line. Okay. Yeah, this one sounds fine. I feel like I'm not. I'm not getting to the. <laughs> I know, that's Fred. I feel like I'm not getting to the bottom of what's going on with Courtney. I'm more confused than ever. Like, is she in love with David? No, I just think I think they have a strong love, and I don't think um, they. You know, sometimes people aren't compatible in a marriage situation. Right, but she's jealous of the new girlfriend. Well, she feels badly he... about seeing him with someone else. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's jealousy at all. You don't think she'd shoot uh, anybody? Do you? Oh, I do stop. think she might shoot her, but I don't think she's jealous. <laughs> shoot him. I don't get that feeling. Right. I mean, she's not going to. Does she cry day. when you're laying in bed with her? Is she crying still about all this? Um, not this morning. She's not crying. But you've seen her cry. Yeah, I think it's been a tough year for both of them. Right. All right, here's Courtney again. Hey. Yeah. Hey, baby. Uh-huh. Oh, that's better. <laughs> but, but I had to, it was, um, but in the scene, the scenes that I did with David, I had to flirt with him. Yeah. And since Bill never lets me um, flirt with anyone cute, and he always writes me married to some schlub in shows. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Courtney's gives me the signal. Do you know that the, the, the Krista ninety percent of the time makes me just have heart palpitations the way she talks. I can't. <laughs> just, okay, go ahead. And so, David, I got to flirt with David, and I started getting the giggles and got very carried away. Wow. And um, finally was climbing up on a desk, and Courtney was supposed to say stop, and by the third time, she was pulling me very tightly, gripping my Why? Leg. Why does she care? <laughs> but why does she care? Oh, dear. No, I don't. I mean, I, I know. I, I don't really care. That was, it was all in fun. Courtney, you're not, you're like, you don't, you're not like, begging for a man to enter you? I mean, it's been over a year. Such a know, great. I, I mean, I, you're, I mean, the world's your <laughs> the world's your oyster. I mean, let's do it. Let's get let's get you into somebody. Who would be a good match for Courtney Cox? Let's I'm, imagine, um, Courtney. Who do you think would be Krista? Who would be good for her? I'm telling you, my wealthy tennis playing. No, she wants an actor. That's her. No, thing. no. I, I mean, maybe trying to get away from who that. who can teach me about you know who someone who is calmer than me. I want to be the bad one. I want to be the one that, that oh, the guy goes, it. Oh, Courtney. You're not bad. Yeah. But I'm, I, well, I want to be the bad one. <laughs> <laughs> then we can't find Courtney anybody for you. Courtney takes care of everybody. <laughs> you know? Courtney always takes care of everybody and, is, and every, organizes everything and makes everything okay. And I like wants, that. Yeah, and she wants someone to take care of her a little bit. Oh, yeah. And be in control. Well, then Howard's not the right person. Yeah, no, she'd need to take care of me, too. <laughs> you don't want to be involved with me. I barely lift a finger. You know, be a good Peter Dinklage. You ever see that oh, guy? Oh, I love him. Don't you love him? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe. Imagine Courtney Cox going out with Pe- <laughs> Peter Dinklage. Great. I'm in oh, love with him. Very attractive. I think they're a cute couple. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That would be a change. Wow. <laughs> we were talking about, um, like, Court. Um, uh, oh, she's going to kill me for saying this. Courtney, there's oh, something no. sexy about uh, Jimmy Kimmel to her. Oh. But Whoa. he has Molly, and we love Molly. Really? Jimmy Kimmel and Courtney? I like Courtney. his smile. He's a nice smile. And Jimmy's looking more handsome every he day. He is. He yeah. does look good. Beth likes him, too. She thinks he's a good guy. Mm, yeah, but look, yeah. someone like that who has their own thing, who's smart and funny. Right. Yeah. You know? And likes to cook. We like that. He loves giving oral, too, he told me. Did he tell you that? He loves oral. He loves giving anal. I Oh, my yeah, God. Jimmy loves, said that? Yeah, he, he likes 69ing. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> he's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what he likes. I've never discussed sex with him once. I don't even think he likes sex. Oh, stop. Uh, yeah, well, you know, he's with Molly, but I'm sure you could break yeah. that thing up, right? No, 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 no. I like that. No, I just, I think he is a nice I mean, if she put her mind to it. Right. I'm no, doing Molly's the show tomorrow a, night. Maybe I'll, I'll work. No, I'm just kidding. Molly, um, I am doing the show tomorrow night. Molly's a great girl. Yeah, she's so yeah. great. Yeah, but I could see you with like a Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. You know, I'm running. I don't know who the hell I yeah. could see you, you know, with. So maybe a comedy writer. Courtney likes to laugh. She. Um, oh, then Andy Dick is your man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe they're just. Maybe you should go back with David. There are no good guys. Russell Brand is free. <laughs> Russell you know Brand. If, Howard, if you and Bill had a baby, so it was the rock and roll aspect of you, and the the and Bill, you know, a little bit of preppy, but Bill's a little too preppy for Courtney, 
then that would be a perfect person for her. Uh, Krista's husband, Bill, is way into her. Like, yeah. he's always, he's still jerking off to her and doing all kinds of... Well, he of, wants her picture in the closet. Yeah, Courtney needs a, Courtney needs a guy who's really going to interact with her and, and be all over her. And has a whole bunch of money because she can't afford to do another split. <laughs> yeah. No, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, you know. Why are you always selling all your homes? I haven't sold in a while. Krista, what's I, your favorite? I have this one. I don't have this one forever. What's your favorite sexual position, Krista? Side. Courtney? I like the side, too. Yeah. I like when a guy rolls yeah. me on my side, too. <laughs> You Listen, three girls should get together. Yeah. You have so much in common. Don't miss Courtney Cox and Krista Miller on the season premiere of Cougar, Cougar Town. Town. Is this your fifth season? No, it's our, it's third. our third. But, Howard, huh. it's not about Cougars. It's not about the title. We know it's a horrible title. No, it's it, not, by the way. I know Bill, Bill started this movement. He wants to change the title. I'm like, it's not a horrible title. But, you know, this doesn't describe the show. And people get in a thing of, you we wouldn't watch... That show because it's uh, about cougars and it's not. Courtney gets engaged this season on the show. There's no cougars in sight. I don't know what you're so uptight about with that. Well, uh, if they're having a problem with uh, the title discouraging people from watching, that's a problem. Jimmy's having another party for me out in L.A. I'm gonna. We're gonna. I'm gonna be there. there. Well, who? Right. Well, who's? Is are you and David, David coming together? Of course, because you're friends with David. And guess who else you're friends with? Oh, me. Yeah. Well, I'm are there. you guys? But are you guys going to do that we're weird thing? We're going to probably go together. We'll make jokes, and you'll be like, hey, and "How weird is that?" In front of David, and how and now it's probably them? appropriate. David how- and Courtney are going to come together. Well, that'll be easy to hook her up with somebody at the party. Howard, bring bring your friend that you have in mind. I mean, come on, you're meeting all these people on uh, America's Got Talent. Maybe one of the acts. Maybe he'll- oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an excellent juggler. That'd be good for her. I think. <laughs> Now, uh, who are you guys, if we do this party again, I suppose Demi and Ashton will be invited. Hmm. Now, who are you, who are you guys siding with? What team are we on? What team are you guys on? Team Demi. I don't, I mean, I don't really know the stuff. I'm so, you, Howard, I'm weirder than you think. I don't even know what's going on other than, I mean, I've known Demi longer. And so you're. She's on team Demi. So Demi should be invited and not Ashton. But Demi won't be able to come. Why? She just went into rehab. Uh, she's not going to last a day there. She's, oh, in, she's in for exhaustion. Yeah, well, who isn't exhausted? Yeah, yeah well, only in L.A. In... do you get hospitalized for exhaustion. <laughs> I want to be in a, in a hospital for exhaustion. <laughs> Me too. I am exhausted. Are you gr- I never seem to have to call 911, but I feel exhausted. <laughs> well, take a nap at Jimmy's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Courtney, you're going to show up with David to the party. I, mean, I don't know if I'll show up with him, but I'm, I'm, he's going to be there, of course. Yeah, well, maybe now uh, I can have a conversation with you without him cock-blocking me. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. He's, he says to me, Courtney, it's time. Get out there. Oh, he, he does? He wants me to date now. He, he wants me to start my life, and he's comfortable with whoever that would be. What guy have you made out with? I've done made out with one guy. The guy from the show, right? Maybe. Yeah. I know it. And he felt you up. <laughs> and fingered you. Oh, my no. goodness. He got to third base. No, definitely not. Do, do people still do that? I would. If, if I, they can. Beth doesn't like him because I don't, I don't cut my nails properly. I can't imagine someone doing that to me. I'd be like, what are you doing? Did, did, what, you would be upset if a guy put his finger in no, you? No, no, no. Hello? <laughs> what? What? Phone went dead. That oh. happened. I don't remember David doing that. You don't remember David ever putting his finger in you? Yeah, I mean, I guess, but, but we, I mean, we, well, it's better on the outside pushing. Yeah, why don't girls like a finger inside them? Is it because guys? I don't love it. Unless you're going to reach the G spot. Yeah, well, hook my finger back there and find that thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's fine while you're touching it at the same time. You're telling me that guys should not put their finger in a girl when they're making out with her and stuff? They should just rub the outside? I like yeah, that. I mean, I if you can do it at the same time, that's the way to go. But otherwise, that's free. You know, you'd have to... I don't know how you're going to do that. So you need to meet a guy who can put his penis in you and rub the outside of your vagina at the same well, time. that is possible, yes. Yeah. And, and right. that does happen. Yeah, oh yeah, I could do that. You I, do do that, I'm sure. Yeah, if you want it, I'll do it. <laughs> Especially from the side. Yeah, I like... That's how I, you work it out. My problem with banging or having, making love to a woman... 
on her side is that I it feels so good that I literally explode in a second. You don't get around to the front. I no. <laughs> I don't think I'd last more than five seconds with Courtney because I, I, I just find Courtney like one of those icons, you know? That you, uh, have you ever thought mm. about making love to the woman? What do you mean? Well, if you're only thinking about yourself. Yeah. You're, no, you're, no, I do. I, I would like I'd be nervous to sleep with Courtney because I'd really want her to be impressed with my lovemaking. Right. So just stay outside for a while. Yeah, I'll, I'll rub her on the outside for a while. How long do I need to rub you on the outside to impress you? <laughs> Give me an Longer ETA. Than you'd like. <laughs> and you can you can orgasm from that? Yeah. Wow. And her body, Howard, you would be though in trouble. Her body is, is rock body solid. Death. Oh my god. So not true. How's her ass? It's not, I'm working on it so hard. It's, it's not so great. cute. Is it there was, any I, cellulite whatsoever? Take no. a look. Courtney, no, pull up I your panties. I what? saw it in the shower on Sunday. You showered together? No, I went up because I needed flaw. I did ask Krista, what are the kids doing these days? We had to compare, <laughs> compare grooming techniques on Sunday. So you guys were naked on Sunday, and then... I was. I was getting in the shower, and I just said, is this and I right or wrong? Right. It was perfect. <laughs> what did she have? Just a, just a little bit of perfection. Well, like a little tiny bit of hair. Yeah, tiny. So who does that for you, Courtney? You go get waxed? No, I don't know. It's not worth the pain. So what do I you do? I just have to, I shave. You shave it. Why don't you laser uh, that thing? I know. I try to keep talk me, it. tries to talk me into it all the time, but that hurts. Chris is clean as a whistle. I mean, I mean, I mean, you don't know for sure, but you imagine. <laughs> right. You know, Chris is clean. Clean as a baby. Not, I mean, she's got, she's got the perfect amount down there, but I can't believe it. It is not attractive. You, would, I mean, I, I was um, doing the scene with um, one of my other boyfriends, uh, Josh Hopkins, and what are the characters from Star Wars? Um, uh, oh, he's called me Chewbacca. Oh, <laughs> I'm so hairy, oh, oh, and he oh. was Han Solo. What do you have, hairy arms? No, she does not. She doesn't I just shave don't. her legs. She forgets to shave her legs. I'm very, very clean person, but I. It's hard. I don't have a lot of time. I, I'm always late, so I, I don't. I'm gonna laser her up, Howard. Before you guys start dating, I'm gonna get her lasered. <laughs> Sounds to me like you two like like I'm pretty intimate. I mean, you're in bed together, and, showering, and Courtney's showering, and you just walk in and you're looking at her. <laughs> we're, we're very close. Do you ever touch each other's boobs to like kind of check out how they feel? Yeah. I yeah. Good. Yeah. I told you they, these two are really up to nonsense. <laughs> Do you ever wash each other? <laughs> We've never done that, but maybe later. Why did yeah, you we... feel each other's breasts to, like, just check out what's doing? <laughs> well, no, we had a, like, we just had a scene that um, I'm getting ready to go seduce David, and uh, Courtney was adjusting my boobs in my bra. Bill wrote it. Oh, you mean way. it's a scene, but I'm saying in private. Have you guys ever checked each other's breasts out? I kind of think so. Uh, like you've touched them. Have you ever touched my breasts? Yeah. I feel like, I mean, it's not like a... Chrissy, you've touched them. Courtney's right breasts? Now. Look, I'm doing it right now. They're good. Wow. She's got such pretty boobs. Sucka, I mean... Oh, stop. Uh, <laughs> kiss them. You know, we have such a nice friendship. It's, uh, I, Courtney is... I'm so grateful to have someone, A, that I can work with, but also be friends with that I, I can just be totally myself, and she loves me anyway. What if I said to you two in private, look... Beth can't find out, Bill can't find out, and I guess David can't find out. <laughs> but, like, the three of us go off somewhere and we bang each other. Would you guys be up for that, or would that be insane? Well, how's it going to work? Well, yeah, uh, we go in. I would I mean, I'm just are you, Is someone going to watch, or is it going to be no. all three activities? No, all three activity. I've never done that, but, you know. I mean, I think it would be safer that way. <laughs> I haven't done that, but, you know, I, I really love Beth. No, I'm saying, let's say... Like, in a, in a, we were in living in a strange... Yeah, I, listen, it was okay with listen, everybody? I love Beth. Sneaking? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm never going to fuck my situation up with Beth, but let's just say, would that be something you guys would be open to? I mean, fun... I mean, I don't know. I've never... I might have to... We'd have to drink. Take some sort of pill. No, of course we'd drink. I'd yeah, have to drink. there'd be lots of drugs. Yeah, and I'd probably, you know, I could get hash and probably X. We can, you know, we can definitely be doped up, so we can blame it on that. You might need ayahuasca. I'm to have intoxication. Shooting these two up in a hotel room. 
We would definitely be hospitalized for exhaustion after. Let me tell you what a party we'd have. It'd be crazy. And Courtney would finally get to be a bad girl. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'd get some of that Johnny Knoxville moonshine. <laughs> oh, God. You two would be nuts. <laughs> someone throw up at Jimmy's. Courtney, how long has it been? A year, huh? You haven't had a sex with anybody. Been a year, yeah. Good Lord. That's not that crazy for a girl, to be honest with you. Yeah. Why? I'm not, I'm not, the guy I'm, you made out with, what, what went wrong there? Like, what happened? Like, he freaked out? No, just that, you know, it's just not right timing for me to try to do anything more than that. I'm not saying one day I won't, but it's just right now I'm not quite ready to date. I'm getting closer, and as things become more final in my life with David, I have to, you know, I'm just catching up to some of the actions. Wow, that's so mature. Women are so much smarter than not guys. Not every woman. Uh, you just said that about Demi. Why can't she be alone? Uh, I don't know. Not Demi, J-Lo. Oh, J-Lo's a mess. <laughs> Is J-Lo yeah, a I mess? Mean, <laughs> You're going to go out with your, some, you know, 20-year-old dancer. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right, because this Wait is her. She's been married three times. <laughs> Take a breather. What? I'm what? sure he's, Robin, I'm sure he's really interesting. And I'm having... sure he's good in bed. How much? Oh. oh, come on. A lot of it is like knowing how to handle a woman and talk to her. And, and dancers know bodies. Yeah, well, you know, that wears out after at least 10 years. <laughs> a, a minute. Yeah. I mean, Courtney needs somebody... If Courtney does the younger guy thing, I think it's going to look bad. And it's going to be a disaster. And I don't think she needs to do that. Do I say it again? If I do what? The younger guy thing. Yeah, that's, that, I, that's, I'm, mm, that's hard. I admire it's not hard. The David thing wasn't hard. That was fine. But I can't. That's too much pressure. I'm getting older. I can't. But think how much fun you're going to have when you start dating. Like, you know, you're going to go out to dinner with a dude and you're going to be into him. And then all of a sudden, like, he's going to reach in. Like, well, you're going to be eating and he's going to reach underneath your dress. And he's going to pull off your panties. That gonna, sounds great. Yeah. yeah I mean, maybe one of Denise Richards guys that she uh, always has those three guys that. Yeah. Maybe you could date Richie nonsense. Sambora. Mm. Oh, great. Or you could go out with Charlie Sheen. Uh, he's bad. Oh, boy. I, I know. I want to be the bad one, remember? I don't oh, want that's right, right, yeah, right. She doesn't want a bad one. She wants to be the bad one. Uh, I don't uh, want to wonder. On I don't want to go back and have my childhood issues rear their ugly head. Right. What are your childhood issues? Um. Uh, being embarrassed, you know, like you know, I watched a lot of nonsense in my family. You did? Yeah. There was nonsense in your family? Yeah, you know, my dad was really charming and he was really funny, but he didn't have a lot of respect for commitment. Oh, uh, sounds just like Charlie. Right. You had to be the parent. Everybody to loved him. Oh, now it explains everything yeah. to me. So you had to be the parent to your parents. I've been a parent since I was born. I mean, I got a job at 13. And then you married David, and you feel like you're being a parent again. Yeah. Oh. I mean, yeah. Okay, baby. Now, I didn't have to worry about fidelity with David, but, you know, you have to. David is an amazing human being that has crazy ideas. There's a lot of reining in, and I'm, I'm very practical, and that's why I've, I was able to save my money and be, you know, my dad went bankrupt when I was a kid probably five times. Wow. So I, I, I'm just much more of the, um, I'm a little hypervigilant, and I'm ready at this point in my life to relax. So when you went to the psychiatrist and said, listen, I think I'm in a pattern here, I, I married my, what, 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 I went through, I'm doing what my parents did. Well, I didn't realize that I'd married my dad until much later. Like, I had no idea that David was so much like my father as far as being a, a dreamer and fun and sweet and funny and great, but not really grounded in what I need to be grounded in. It works for some people, and it's fine, but it makes me anxious. You know who you could go out with? Who? That one that just broke up with Chelsea Handler, that financial that, dude. That, oh, the... Andre Bethal's Andre Bethal, the, the, the hotel guy. The hotel guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe no, I really like Chelsea, so I would, I mean... But maybe you ought to go out with him. I thought you meant 50 Cent. Oh. <laughs> no, she couldn't handle that. I mean, the only mature, stable guy I can think of that Courtney could go out with is Leonard Nimoy. Oh, oh gosh. He's very mature and stable. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right, listen, I'm not going to keep you guys on the phone all day, although I could. Krista. Yes. Talk to me seriously about me putting up on the website the beautiful pictures of you that I took. But you send me the ones you're comfortable with. Um, all right, I can I can tell you the ones I'm comfortable with because I love them. Yeah, and the, especially the one of you against the window and just that uh, the little like um, shawl, see through shawl. Love it. 
That I'd like to put up on my website. I say already yes to that. Yeah, I got to put some of these up there. Yeah. You'll be very um, impressed. I did a boudoir shoot. And also, Howard, that one that's that I have, I have my hands up by my face and I'm looking to the side. You better I send me them. One. I don't want to okay. fuck up and send one, put one on there that you don't like. All right, I'll send them to you. I just mm. love them. And also... How about the one where you're laying on your back and, like, your boobs are up in the air? I, I might be all right with that. Yeah, I'm all right with it. And who cares what Bill thinks? And the back <laughs> one, the one in the purple on the yes. Purple couch? Yes, yes. I love. You should see how they look framed, and when you sign them, they're the most. They're such. A, if if my house is on fire, I would grab those pictures and my children and run out. Yeah, Courtney, what's my shot at getting you in the front of the camera? I'd do it. Yep. For sure. It's gonna be a party. Party. Yeah, we're gonna. We we want to see you. We want you to come out. You got to see what's happening in Malibu. Yeah. I'm fun in Malibu. <laughs> You'll be I might not hours. be fun in New York, but I'm fun in <laughs> you're, Malibu. You're Malibu fun. Oh, yeah. Early. Last time I went to Malibu, I got sick. <laughs> I had so much fun. You won't get sick here. Why don't you guys kiss each other before hey, I... You're kiss right now. Go ahead. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Robin and Fred. Good talking to you. Kiss each other now. Yeah. We, as soon as we hang up... I'll no, no, no. I want to hear it. On her Let me hear it. A little it. bit. All right. I'll come over and kiss her. Hold on. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> it was right on the lip. <laughs> and slash my chin. But. Courtney, kiss her back. <laughs> I'm going to tuck her in, put her back to bed. I thought you want to be the wild one. Come on. <laughs> yeah, the, she's the one. She actually would take good care of me, though. If I went to a hotel with these two, this would be like, oh, come on, somebody kiss each other. <laughs> for Christ's sake, rub Courtney's feet. <laughs> All right. Have fun, girls. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. There they are. Two fun gals. <laughs> huh? Two of them laying in bed. They did, had a little pajama party did. for us. Yeah. Sounds like fun, right? Malibu, hanging no, out. it doesn't sound like fun. See, it does to me. <laughs> I know. You're into that stuff. Oh, I love it. Girls <laughs> laying around talking. Bad mouthing David. I'm busy. I love David, but I'd be in there bad mouthing him. Really? Of course. You'd be talking badly about yeah, yeah, your yeah. friend. Like I'm all together. And... <laughs> How could you be with him? How could you be with him? I mean, what about a mature guy with a with like a belly and titties? <laughs> there you go. Doesn't that sound like fun to you guys? Like what's going on over there? They no? were sleeping. What's so uh, fun? I don't know. It just seems like fun. <laughs> it's got my mind going. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, hey, Krista's giving me the go-ahead to to uh, publish, to publish a few of those pictures. The picture. Wait till you guys see these pictures I took of her. I'm I very... knew it. I told you what they were. <laughs> well, I knew what they were. <laughs> I just didn't feel comfortable saying it unless she did. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. So you guys, I know you talk, You guys were alone when you did it. No, no, no. Beth, no. Was, Beth there. was there. So who? I, I mean, obviously there were you know some topless ones. Who's, did you bring it up? Did they bring it up? Like, how did it come up? I'm cool. I, I'm the photographer. I talk about lighting. Mm. I talk about, uh, you know, uh, this kind of vibe that I want. But her position. husband actually suggested yeah, yeah, yeah. erotic it was a, pictures. I'm making it sound like fun, but it was, quite frankly, I just wanted to come through for Krista and her husband. And Beth was totally, like, you know, styling the thing. Right. Although there wasn't much to style. Well, she had to give her a necklace or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, she actually styled. It was a lot of fun, but it, it was a lot of... Pre when I do a photography session, I'm being serious. Like, I, I've photographed my, my uh, friend's kids and stuff. And it's so much pressure on me because I want to come through for them. I, you know, I want them to have a good experience and I want them to fall in love with the pictures and Krista, mm -hmm. said, Krista has them hanging all over her house at least some of them right because she's well, got she kids did say, didn't she say she was using one as a publicity photo yeah yeah. and that these were the best pictures that were ever taken of yeah, her yeah like her Twitter photo is a photo I took of her mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I actually think they're some of the best pictures I've done she looks beautiful like amazing mm. in them and, have, uh, have you uh, pleasured yourself to them no why not I've played with the head of my penis to them oh stop it no no I haven't I really have it was very did you squeeze your toad? 
Yeah. You know what's funny? And this is how a guy like you get to rep as a photographer. In the hallways yesterday, I ran into Krista's publicist. Yeah. And we were just talking about her coming on the air today. She goes, by the way, I saw those pictures. Howard's a fucking amazing photographer. And then they just start telling people. Yeah, well. She was really blown away by your pictures. Look at this. You have a new career already. Well, you want to know something? I'm doing a thing. I'm actually setting up a, like a little website where I'm going to offer my services as a, as a photographer. But, of course, I won't receive any payment. It'll be um, through it'll be, uh, the payment would be donations to this charity I'm into. I'll oh, sign wonderful. up. I, I need a new yeah. press file. I'll sign up. Yeah, but you see, with friends, they feel funny. No, no, I, I would donate anyway. You would? Yeah, I like that place. I got cats from there. And stuff. Minimum donation, $25,000, well, Gary. No <laughs> problem for Gary. <laughs> hey, you're high roll. No. A new bag no, of I, mean, shoes. I would do it for you no matter what. But I, and I would donate. Well, you don't have... You see, th you see, that's the problem with my idea. What? I go to everyone. They go, okay, where do I donate? I go, oh, no, 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 you don't have to. <laughs> you keep, keep telling them nobody right. has to donate? That's right. <laughs> Then just wait for solicitations through the website. I mean, I'm really proud of the pictures I took for Ralph's uh, app there, uh, Champion Magazine. I haven't seen those yet. Yeah. I don't have the app. You don't have 99 cents. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, did, I took those. So I got, I'm into it. Yeah. And when I did the pictures for Krista, I did feel a lot of pressure because I wanted to come through and I wanted her to think they were the best pictures ever taken. Right. And this is a girl. Well, there's one of me. I took that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. But that's nothing. Yeah, she's all clothed there. <laughs> I've got bra and panty ones. I've got uh, just like this little see-through shawl thing. Uh -huh. She's got an exquisite ass. <laughs> she looked good. Real good. See the pure look of joy on her face? Yes. It's because she's working with me. I see yeah, that. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> How could a girl be happier? I want to do a boudoir shoot with you. Sure. No. What do you mean, sure? <laughs> you want beautiful, sexy pictures of yourself? You know, while you still have it, let me get, let me capture it. <laughs> John Lieberman, come on and give us some headlines from the Howard 100 Newsroom. Here he is. JL. John Lieberman was hired because he's Jewish. All right, John. Good morning. We begin this morning with breaking news. Does Scott the Engineer play his son's band's music subtly from inside his studio? Yeah, did you so, hear about this? So no. passers-by will hear it and inquire as to what band it is. <laughs> Scott has a new uh, Scott has a new intern. Oh my yeah. God. Her name is Raffia. Uh-huh. How do you say her name? Raffia? Raffia. I call her Raffia. I, I don't yeah, know how to say Raf her name. I think Raffia is the, yeah. uh, she goes by Fia, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to call her Fia. Oh. But Fia, <sighs> I see her every morning. Yes. She's Scott's new in, uh, new intern. There's always a problem with Scott's new, new interns because they get wise to him. Right. They, so, they clue us in on what he's up to. She was, uh, oh you know, she was on the intern show. So they were talking. <laughs> and Fia says, hey, uh, you know, it's really weird. Whenever I would go into Scott's studio, there'd be this weird music on, <laughs> like this weird, really bizarre music. Uh-huh. <laughs> So she finally, I think, said, well, here, here she is on the intern show. This is what happened. This is Fia, the intern. Talk about Scott. And Scott's now angry. <laughs> you know what? Why should the, he get angry? I don't know. He wants people to, to ask about the music. This is exactly what he wants here. And, and by the way, to answer your question, John, yeah, I think he's playing it so that everyone will hear it and talk about it. And I think he's amped up the amount of play since I've become a judge on America's Got Talent. Uh. Uh, that's one theory. 
the the tension is so palpable in Scott's studio now when Scott is sitting there and the intern sitting there and Scott oh. Scott's angrier than I've ever seen him just in my short time here. <laughs> yeah. You know, somebody just came up to me and said that Scott really hasn't gotten along with his last three to four interns. Really? Yeah, Scott always has a problem with interns. What is wrong? I don't know. Interns are here just to like sort of observe and that kind of so like maybe help, help out. A little bit. I think Scott wants them doing his job. But he doesn't well, have any, uh, you know, why is he getting upset nothing, with that? They don't work hard enough. Well, it's now gone to the next level as well because Scott's this son was so problem. angry I that I interviewed him yesterday <laughs> and he told us that the intern shouldn't worry about his music. She should just, quote, get his dad coffee like she's supposed to. But why is Scott? But why is Scott's uh, son's music being played here anyway? I mean, I don't understand. Isn't he supposed to be working back there? Well, there's a couple different issues. The other issue is that Fia apparently on the wrap-up show also criticized Scott's <laughs> son's <laughs> band's oh, music. To, you can't do that? Uh -oh, and so he is now like striking back yeah. and oh, saying that man. she has no right to criticize I'll straighten his music. This out. Here, here, here's Fia on the intern show. Oh, my God. I walk into Scott's office and... It's like, it's the same song every time, and it's just this, it sounds like a teenager just droning on with this awful, like, early 90s alternative rock line. And so I finally asked, it was like, yo, Scott, what are you listening to, man? And he's like, uh, why? Why do you like it? And I'm like, uh, how do I answer this? Because no, and second, I get a feeling it's your son. And the last thing I want to do is offend you. So I'm just like, no, nah, it's it's okay, you know. I just um, I just you just been playing it for a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, where's Fia? I want to. And where's Scott? And here's I mean, the Scott's other thing. Scott's got to stop being a baby. If you're going to put your son's music on in the studio every day. You're leaving, you, you know, cool. first of all, Get in there. What, what, hey, Fia. And here's what is bothering Scott the most as well. Our reporting found that Steve Brandano backed up Fia's claims. Oh, shit. That Scott was playing oh, his son's on. band's music. So Brandano yesterday on the news said, look, we're on to his trick. I was walking by to go to lunch. I heard the music start just as I started to walk Why by. Why do you think oh. he's doing that? To, what, to Fia, introduce people to his music. Fia, I don't want you to have an uncomfortable situation with Scott, but, but really, what did you do that was wrong? You just said, hey, Scott always is playing his son's music in there. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> just trying to step in Scott's shoes for a second. I, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was uh, probably the personal attack on his son's music. But you didn't like it. Yeah, and, and it's, we don't even know that it was his son's music, right. really. Like, I, I have no idea. Right, you're not and, looking to offend him, but you didn't do anything that wrong, really, in my opinion. Did he not answer you when he you asked what kind of what music it was? He didn't answer me, and apparently I should have taken the hint that that was uh, never to be spoken of. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Didn't get that wow. hint. Oh, dear. You know what? Do me a favor. You said you're, you know, in Scott's shoes. Get out of his shoes right now, because... <laughs> Before you get hit by lightning. Yeah, yeah, you can really... Really have bad things happen to you. Are you out of his shoes now? Yes. Oh good. Oh good. Oh good. Wait, 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 wait. And you were Scott. you were forced to apologize as well. Ew. Uh, <laughs> Scott, you're being a tool. Oh my god. I wouldn't say I was forced to apologize. I, I did actually feel bad because I didn't mean to. Scott, come clean. Why are you playing your? Okay, number one, you she has no music? idea what was playing. No, was okay. it your son's music? Doesn't matter. To answer. Yes, it yes does. No. Okay, if you want the truth, I was working while I was listening to something, which I always do anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was playing for you know a minute. Okay. But don't you edit stuff? I mean, how I do you wasn't edit doing things? any. I, no, I was doing the news where I had to go online and pull stuff for Robin, and that's what I was doing. It didn't matter what you I was keep listening your son's to. Music on during that time. It was on that particular day. Do yes. I play it all the time? No, because he had just sent me some new stuff. He wanted my opinion. I see. Okay. Can't you it, do that at home? It was playing. Yeah, I can, but it was. Why do you blast it, it here? I don't blast it. Number right. one. Right. Number two. Brandano is a little fucking twerp who could she who oh. could keep his mouth shut because what I was doing when he walked by was playing music that I need to give to Fred. So any music I play, assu everybody assumes it's my son's music. Keep your fucking mouth shut. And push, know what you're talking you about. What? Brandano. I'm not getting it into I'm not gonna get into it with an intern. Right. Because that's not right, and I won't say a word about what she said or what she did. Right. And I never forced her to say to say an apology. I never said a but word. But she to did her. hear your son's music being played 
And a but lot she of times, assumed it. She didn't know what it was. Right. Before she asked she me, and I said, it was your son's music. I said, I'll worry about what's playing. You worry about what you got to do. I never. Are you too emotional what? about your son's I'm music? I'm not emotional what about it at all. I, I'm not. Ta- let her assume. Of all the things Let you her know what she's talking about. Let Brandano know what he's talking about. Because he has no fucking about? idea. Uh, I didn't well, tell an intern what she can what say and playing. what she can say, okay? Let me hear what Steve is when saying. When Scott doesn't say what he's playing, I assume that all of that stuff is. But you never playing. asked me what I was. He assumes, right? Yeah, he just said it. He, he just said it, yes. Okay? Now, I haven't played any of my son's music in like three years, okay? So just don't assume anything. Find out what Scott, you're talking about before you have to make a fucking comment. I'm responding to what Fia said on the internet. She was show. wrong as well. Okay, well now well, Fia is afraid she's to right. come on. She, no, she assumed what I was playing. Well, okay, did she didn't know yeah, that for sure playing. before she went on well, and made the comment. Is she the FBI? Well, she said, "I assume it's Scott Sun's music." And no. she asked you, and you wouldn't tell her. Right. So well, you, that's all you had to prerogative. say was, "It's stuff." Why wouldn't you tell? Her? I don't have to tell her what I'm doing at all. Okay. Oh, she asked me a question, and I said that she didn't have to worry about it. Is that really nice to just like not? To, she, what, what are you embarrassed to say? It's your son's music. I'm not. I'm, I'm not embarrassed. Is it no. secret music? No, it's not. Why obviously, Fia asks you, obviously, everybody has a problem with me listening to something. If Fia asks you about the music, why would you not answer her? Because I knew that was going to happen if I said that was my son's band. But she went on anyway and assumed it was right. Okay, but she was right. I didn't even I didn't even assume it was. I, I was Sophia, just like, you this all... may or may not be. And I commented as the Fia, are you uncomfortable now going on the intern show because of Scott Scott's like terrorizing you, isn't I didn't he? terrorize her. I didn't you say are, if she had to apologize. You're coming on very strong. No, I didn't very I didn't strong. No, not to her. Turns out she was right. It was not your to son's her. I But it was her but it was your son's music. She's right. But that's <laughs> that's n- And that's funny, and that's all she said on the intern show. For so for you to get upset at her about this, and now she's upset with me saying, great, now now Scott hates me, and now I'm worried about going on the show, that's effing up all of us, and it's just over what she was right about. You're, I didn't tell her what she could say music. and what she can't say. Right, but you make her feel bad the next day about it. I didn't rip, and there's way worse I didn't rip anybody. She, she, started, she decided that she ripped um, sir, uh, my son's music. So she, she didn't think it was that great. Big deal. Well, that's her opinion. The I didn't say I that she couldn't say it. I didn't say she couldn't say it. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're carrying on like a loon. Oh. I'm not carrying on at all. Yes, I didn't are. say you, anything to talking, anybody. Is he acting differently toward you since you said that? Uh, lately, it has been back to normal. But, of course, you know, right as soon as we got back this week, it was... It was uncomfortable. Sort of, yeah. yeah. I didn't say anything well, to her about... Well, you didn't about say you anything. You didn't have to say anything to make people I can make people uncomfortable by not saying Well, anything. she made me uncomfortable by saying what she oh, said. Oh, Scott. No. Okay, so, oh, Scott. Could you do oh, me a Scott. favor? Oh, Scott. Stop playing your son's music I'm not here. playing my son's music, okay? Good. I played it then for... You won't get, then you won't be so <laughs> sensitive to criticism about it. Sensitive, okay? He's sensitive, too. I don't too, see you he... get this worked up about anything, <laughs> except this. Yeah. Bowling. Okay. Oh, bowling, right. Thank you, John. Okay. Bowling and your son's music. If you didn't listen to your son's music here, no one could critique, could, could critique it. Right, okay. Excuse me. I don't play it, and it doesn't play 24-7 like everybody thinks it does. Right, okay? do me a favor. If it's going to upset you when people walk by listening to I, your son's music. I don't want people to hear it. I didn't want people to hear it. Well, people it hear it. It was, it was 4.30 in the morning. Evidently, um, the rap is was, a lot of times you crank it up. No, so I, people I don't. Hear it. I, I work on a lot of music for the show. I don't. No, you know? I don't crank anything up. If I'm going to play my son's music, I'm going to close the, th- the door so nobody can hear it. What do you need an intern for in the first place? There's anyway. a lot of tasks that an intern has to do. What? That what do they do? They do. The Fia, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I press record <laughs> on a CD my player. Son's music? I, I, you can't I press record. No, no. I mean, there's stuff that's inconvenient for him to do. That, right. Like I can't do. Right. Check the dats and stuff like that. So. You're right. All right. Let's let's do. <laughs> 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 You press the record button? <laughs> you know, that record button has been a big problem. Make you know, sure it's record and not pause. Gary, I need an intern. <laughs> I'm tired of hitting the record button. I have better things to do. <laughs> what does she do? Hit a record button? Bob, that's what she says she I does, I guess. I learned a lot from Scott. Yes. 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 Uh, Scott's... Look, this is the only thing that has happened between I, Scott and I that has been volatile. Right. Like, beyond that, I feel like... I can talk to him. If I ask him a question, he's got to fucking answer. Can you learn answer. from him? I can learn from him. Right. 
you know, and I'm I'm sorry this all happened. Oh. But right. it was just an observation that I made. I shouldn't have fucking made it. Well, I'm sorry. Fia, it's fair to say when you're on the intern show, you feel like you want to come through with something. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. And and I didn't feel it was something that I had heard on the show before. So right. I didn't feel like it was personal information that I was putting out there. It's something Believe that Believe me, knew. it's no big deal. Scott shouldn't be listening to his son's music anyway. In, in fact, Fia, Fia, I'm going to put you in charge of something, if you don't mind, if I assign you a task. And if it's unreasonable, you tell me. Okay. If you hear Scott's son's music again in there, would you report to me? Please. See, the problem is she doesn't know what Scott's son's music is. <laughs> you should hear Scott's son's music. If you, if, if you hear strange music back there, would you yeah, report See, me? that's the problem. Any music is, yeah. you know. Uh, Brandano uh, walked by. I was playing music yesterday. It was for Fred. So, you know. I'll do the best that I uh, can. Thank you. I mean. You're, you're welcome. What? Was this the same day Scott erased my page? My uh, <laughs> that you were listening to the music was it coincidentally? No, it wasn't I feel the same. so bad for Scott on this wasn't because he was actually day. trying to show me uh, how to use profit. And right. So, I guess kinda, oh, so you saw this him? This is how it. you don't do it. <laughs> you saw him commit the act? I'm, yes, but, <laughs> I'm, Scott. I'm sorry. I'm Next sorry. time he erases a page, uh, would you please report that to me <laughs> so I can be prepared? I'm going to show you how to erase every page. So. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Perhaps you just need a panic button, and any time something happens, you, you just, just hit the button. Push it, yeah. and then yeah. Why don't we just leave a Scott camera in there? What's your Twitter name, Fia? And, but am I saying your name right, Fia? Is, is that a good Yeah, way my to name is Rafia. People call me Fia. Rafia. Yes. What is that, African? It's Muslim. Muslim? Yeah. Your parents were uh, Black Panthers? Uh, my mother Black was Panthers? nation of... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mother was nation of Islam. Oh, okay. Um, was. Yeah, my mother too. I think that's why she kept me in a black neighborhood. <laughs> but it's been Howard is life. a uh, Nation of Islam name. Yeah, very nice. Um, yeah, Twitter, oh, big black lesbian. You're a big black lesbian. You're a lesbian. Yes. I, is it true you're in love with Robin? <laughs> what? Yeah, she has a big crush on you. Oh, under the bus. Nice. What's the matter, Robin? Hated you got a problem? I don't have any problems. Guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not. Is I'm not in love with Robin. Right, Thank you. but you're attracted to her. Robin is a very attractive woman. Oh well, God. you don't have to tell me that. <laughs> I don't know how something hasn't happened between the two of you already. I, I wouldn't be able to contain. Uh, that, so. How do you know it hasn't? Whoa! <laughs> how about a there new I go photo shoot? There I go it again. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, huh? Oh I've heard other uh, lesbian women say they're way into Robin. Really? Yeah. You know Robin's hot. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's listen, and she's a lover. <laughs> she's very passionate when she's affectionate. Really? Like you get you you, bu you bust through that whole <laughs> you know kind of tough veneer. Yep, it's a soft. What is Robin's sexiest feature to you? Robin's sexiest feature. Yeah. Huh. Um. <laughs> I think uh, physically. I mean, you know, I, I think her personality is. Well, of course, everyone the knows that. Sexiest part of her. Oh, um, yeah. it really isn't. There's Ooh. something sexier. In my. <laughs> <opinion>. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't know. Were you thinking of buying her a Valentine's Day gift? Oh, stop this! I'm telling you. It was suggested at one point. What would you get her? What do you buy the woman who has everything? You can't get her another boat. Right, there's some wind chimes. Right. Um. Uh, vegan chocolates. You know, like pajamas. Yes. Yeah. You know, edible <laughs> vegan pajamas. <laughs> you always have admirers every minute. Uh, it's it's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell I'll me tell you what, man. Well, I do wish that Scott would t stop making his interns uncomfortable. That's crazy. <laughs> Getting into Robin's panties ain't no easy trick. If you think, <laughs> think it's going to be easy, it's not. I, I think I have a leg up on you know some of the some of the other people who've tried. Oh. Really? Yeah. Ooh. What do you mean? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I have an intimate, you know, the, the uh, knowledge of the way a woman works. Oh. Right. You know? <laughs> I don't. Teach me. Forget her. <laughs> if Robin oh, gave you an hour, could you turn her? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> It'd be done. It'd be done. <laughs> done deal. Done deal. Uh, I wouldn't even need the whole hour. <laughs> what would you need? 20 minutes? 15, 20 minutes. Wow. Oh, uh, deal, pal. You can spend the rest, you know, <laughs> relaxing, watching TV or something. Good for you. <laughs> you got a girlfriend or no? Not at the moment.
I've been. What? Would you ever consider <laughs> oh, trying no. lesbianism? No. It's not your thing. No. Well, that's what they all say that's before they, they turn. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen them turn. You've taken straight women, so, so-called so straight women, and turned them? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Robin would be easy. Piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> I put in the effort. <laughs> Robin, you're hurting my intern's feelings by not going off with her for 20 minutes yeah, and at least giving her a shot. You've got a secret room back there. You can put that to use. What do you do to someone like Robin to turn her? I mean, what would you do? What's your technique? Oh, oh wow. Yeah, I, I, now I'm getting uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thea hasn't taken her eyes off of Robin this entire exchange. Hey, cool. who does? I'm going to back up. I put her in another yeah, room. Gets, I can't stand her sexuality. It's too much. <laughs> really, what do you do to, like, if, if it's not Robin, somebody, what do you do? I mean, you, what? What do you special do? Special technique? To turn someone? There's no real technique. It's just, you can tell whether the vibe is there, whether someone wants to sleep with you or not. Do you think Robin's vibe is there? You know, I I don't know Robin mm-hmm. well enough. I only see Robin for ten seconds a day. She comes in, does her thing, and I leave. Right. And uh, you know, it's funny. I don't know. In my whole life, in like twenty minutes, I can turn any woman against me. <laughs> and yet, you say in twenty it minutes you can turn twenty. <laughs> you want know, to be done? It could be like five. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you're saying if you were making love to Robin, she would be converted oh, in 20 minutes. Feel ya. You're that good. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I, I can't guarantee that she would stay converted. Right. But, but she'd it, go for it. Yeah. As long as I was around, she'd be converted. <laughs> She's are you, very confident. Are you gentle with, let's say, a Robin? In other words, Robin goes in the room. She removes her clothes. Now Robin's on the bed. She's naked laying there. Mm-hmm. You would be gentle with her in a way. Yeah. You That's have what be. it is. Gentle. Yeah, and slowly Robin goes, oh, I'm so not into this. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait a second. That feels good. <laughs> mm-hmm. And this feels good. Mm-hmm. And then you start to, and then all of a sudden, she's into it. Exactly. Wow. All of a sudden, she can't tell it's a woman who's <sighs> touching her. Right. Like, you got her she, mouth on her, whatever. Right. It's, it's just a oh, good right. feeling. <laughs> Robin, just close your eyes. <laughs> the feelings are what count. <laughs> oh, Robin. I always thought Pia was so quiet. And now, she's got a lot to say, evidently, about you. <laughs> Oh, yes, Robin, 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 sweet Robin. Yes. You're a beautiful woman, Robin. Why, thank you. Yes, she is. I would love to see you convert her. Maybe we can make it happen. What is this, a contest? (laughs) Take Robin for a future. It's an offer. It's not a contest. It's an opportunity. Right. Honey, it's an opportunity for you to feel good. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. What we need is more love in this world, not That's hate. True. Who would pass I that agree up? with that. That's right. Don't pass anything up. <laughs> anything that looks like love, grab it. Life is too short. Am I right, Fia? Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> grab it and hold, hold on. on. Hold on, baby. I think that Fia is a player. Fia, are you gold star? <laughs> no. You're not? No. You've been with dudes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. I'm more like a bronze star. You're a bronze, bronze. star. <laughs> <laughs> Grape scratch and sniff or whatever. You know? Horrible experience with dudes? Um, no. Well, I've had some pretty good experiences really? with dudes. Mm-hmm. I, I just think anybody can make you come, but you can't, you know, but you can't be in a relationship with anyone. Right. No, it's going to be that special someone. Yeah. Although Robin's not going to be easy to live with. She has her ways. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're looking for real romance, you're going to have to put up with some, you know, star behavior. Uh, I'm looking for more. I'm uh, looking for a sugar well, mama as well. So, yeah. Oh, my. You know. Oh, she can do that. <laughs> she can support. She's very generous. I know this about her. And she loves I'll pretend radiance. I'm not here. Right. <laughs> you two go ahead. Yeah. No. You are very generous, Robin. Very loving, very generous, very giving. I'm not here. You can't talk to me. You would be a lucky woman <laughs> to seduce the likes of a Robin. I know. I know, too. It would be a great honor. Well, let's hope it happens. All right, Fia. Oh. Fia, are you feeling more comfortable about Scott? Yes. Because yes, I'm not. <laughs> Could we get Scott out of it's here? It's like, who's going to make love to me? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's hooking up but me. Again, I'm odd man out. All right, Fia, carry on. Take care. All right. That's Fia the intern. Wow. You wow. are... You're well, just a temptress. That is... Um, uh, that's a surprise. That's breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you break a story. Right there. That's right. That's a surprise. Is Scott still over there? Did no, I feel like not. everyone's into you in like oh, some weird way. Like everyone Why has a little thing for that? you. I don't know. 
I see the way people look at you. <laughs> you know? Every minute with you. You know, you're trying to be professional and all you I walk am, around and you tease yes, everyone. Right. You're magical, aren't you? In a way you are. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I am magic. You're magic. <laughs> you're sweet, sweet magic. <laughs> Good for you, Robin. Isn't that a beautiful compliment, though, when someone's into you? Who cares, a man certainly, or woman? Certainly, yeah. certainly. You're blushing. Well, wouldn't you? Uh, I wouldn't know. No one, could, no, one, <laughs> no one finds me that hot. Oh, stop it. You know. You've had people throwing themselves at you. That's true. You should see who they are. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want the people who throw themselves at me. Those are people throwing things at me, not throwing themselves no. at me. No. Yeah. Boy, you clammed up when Fia was professing her interest in you. I didn't you, clam up. You got I, very uncomfortable. I, I, it was uncomfortable. Oh, wow, that was it great. It was as uncomfortable as any other time that you're mm. sort of put on the spot. Why, Bring why? her back in here. Oh, I love that. Oh, you like that. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> I wish we had a live feed from inside Scott's studio right now to see exactly. Yeah. I guarantee it's silent. I've been, you know, it's been, I, I say hello to her every morning and, and smile, and I see her in the coffee room and talk to her for a second or two. Right. Now I'm going to feel weird. Weird, I think. Yeah, you're a piece of meat. <laughs> Hi. Things, things, <laughs> things took a rather erotic twist in there, didn't they? Yeah, it was very <laughs> unexpected in there. Um, I, I, I don't know. Like, we'll see what happens with me and Robin after the show. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was, I was going to ask you about the uh, the tension between you and Scott, but now do you fear there's going to be some tension, some sexual tension between you and Robin in the hallways or otherwise? No, no. I mean, Robin understands it's all like good fun. You know, like I'm not I'm not creepy. You know, I'm not going to be like stalking Robin in her house. And it's just like it'll be the same as it always was. Like hi and bye. You said your piece, and now it's just time to go back to business. Pretty much. Unless, of course, she. Unless, she comes of course, around. you know, we're alone in a room somewhere and nobody's watching. Well, we'll see. Well, anything can happen. Keep your eyes on the uh, security cameras. You might catch something good. <laughs> now, concerning the controversy with you and your uh, supervisor over there. Mm -hmm. What's gonna? What's as the tension you said has begun to dissolve before today, a little bit. It's gotten back to normal. Right. What have you learned, though, from this experience? Did you feel that you were in the wrong at all, or do you think Scott sort of took it the wrong way and ran with it? I feel like it was a combination of both. You know, I mean, it's being someone who has performed in front of people and has recorded and gone to see friends record. Like, I should have been more sensitive to to the circumstance. You know, like I should have paid closer attention to what I was saying, and I should have been more sure. Of what I was saying. Um, and I understand that I, don't know, I just I, I understand where he's coming from, you know, in a way that I didn't when I was saying it. So. Before this controversy, um, what was it like to work for Scott? Because Howard alluded to the fact that there have been problems with other interns in the past, especially recently. Uh, before this, I well, and even not through it, you know, I've liked working with Scott. You know, I think he's I think he's a funny dude. Well, I like hanging out in here. And, I mean, he seems to like, have a pretty good confidence that I can do the tasks that he's assigned me. So, I mean, whatever. Can you get back to that point after after today? Uh, that's largely dependent on Scott. You know, I mean, that depends. I mean, once once you feel like somebody's throwing you under the bus, you know, it's just like it's like I've done what I can do up to this point. Like I've apologized and I meant it. Right. You know, and so, I mean, that just really depends on how Scott feels about me going forward. I was just gonna say that Thank you, Fia, and uh, quite the on-air debut today. Nice job. Thank you. Not necessarily in love with Benji, but clearly... Can you move forward from this with Fia and coexist in a uh, intern supervisor role? Oh, sure. And yeah. put it on Benji's I, I, But you're clearly hurt by the, by the circumstances and what unfolded. And we have that photo, which we can tweet out. Yeah, I guess you might say that. Just, it's Annoyed very eye-opening into the psyche <laughs> yeah. of... What really tweaked you about Brendano's approach and his comments on the matter? Because he didn't know what he was talking about. He had to be taken off the story. Again, he thought... He just... 
you know, figured that, you know, why not throw Scott under the bus? You were quick to attack him as a person, uh, calling him a little twerp. And he is a little things. twerp. What? This speaks to the fact that you've had past problems with Steve. No, he's just a little twerp for commenting on shit that he doesn't, shouldn't comment on. Yeah. Well, he is, he Stay is, out of it. He is the leader of the intern show. I mean, he is the host. <laughs> well, the show. Isn't it sort that of his job to comment up? on me? Well, isn't it sort of his job? He doesn't have to comment on me and things that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, you clammed up when Fia was professing Just seems like in you. the assumptions were made, but these weren't large uh, offensive assumptions. They were they, they were little observances that you know, they were wrong. And you had the ability to defend that. Well, I did. Oh, I loved it. So I wish we had a live feed from inside in a very angry way right now. To see Am I angry that? because he I he had opened his mouth where he didn't need to get involved? I say hello to her every morning. He wants to say that on the intern show. Let him go fucking say that on the intern show. Yeah. He didn't have to get involved right. and be wrong about it as well. Yeah. So you're a piece of meat. You mess with the engineer, you're going to get the headphones. That's right. That's what they say. That's right. In Lisa's defense, I have to go bowling now. Genuinely. Is this a classic case of Scott trying to bully his way out of a predicament? Yes, and it's it's also a thing we've seen with Scott so many times. He acts aloof or like he won't tell her that it's his son's thing, and then it comes up on the air, and then he comes clean with everything. He's done it with the news stories over and over again. Uh, so we've seen it before, and yes, this is classic Scott. The issue that was sort of touched on is, is also revolves around the fact that Scott's strategically playing this music at select right. times. What, what goes on back here? Well, Raf that's Rafia's theory about uh, he's playing it waiting for people to go, oh, what is this? And then he goes, oh, it's my son's band. I paid attention to her saying that, and all I can say is the next day when we went to lunch, there was no music. I walked by Scott's studio and in JD and John, and suddenly music was blasting out of it. So he claims that stuff for Fred, fine, but just going off of her theory, I can only believe that it matches up. You know, there was no music playing, we walked by, music starts playing, we ignored it like anybody else would. Do you believe Scott's attempting some sort of subliminal move to get you to really like this music? It's a, get it get kind of Absolutely. Catchy. That's that's uh, what that's Fia's theory is that he's going to play it, play it, play it until it's a uh, online sweetheart, which by the way, it's not. <laughs> and that's a lot. And you can judge you can judge what I mean from there. <laughs> Because I saw a subliminal move work once on Saved by the Bell, so I, th I assume it works in real life. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. And uh, we all think that Zach Morris is a hunk now. Uh, it was on a uh, Beau Revere tape. All right, tape. you don't have to show off, Greg. <laughs> Who's on camera right now? You want me to take that thing? Yeah. You want me to... Steve, one question. Yeah. No follow-up. Is Scott an asshole? <laughs> He's acting like one right now. Thank you. You got it. Thanks, guys. No follow-up. No follow-up needed. No follow-up. Poor desired. Yeah. Steve, I'm going to ask a question that we all know the answer to. In fact, I may even answer it myself. You know what? I'm just going to go ask it in my desk. I don't even need you. <laughs> yes? Robin. <laughs> what? The love for you has now reached... Female influence. <laughs> it has to be flattering nonetheless, even though you're not. It's always flattering to be admired or desired by anyone, isn't it? Of course. Even if you got a, an overture from a guy, you'd be flattered, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, I have had that experience Ew. with uh, Joey Boots that time. Oh, that's right. But I, I found it, at first I was flattered, but then I. I don't know, it, it didn't... He tried to take it a little further. Yeah, it got a, <laughs> But this seems more of a, of a, a cute type of flattery because she's yes. younger and she's an intern. Yes. How awkward do you think it'll be around here, though? I mean, I could see... You could, it, was, it was palpable in there. You, were, you couldn't look at her and she was staring at you. <laughs> well, I couldn't see her staring at me. Because <laughs> you chose not to. You, di you didn't even look in her direction. I could see. You know, again, you know, when you're put on the spot like that and everybody's looking at you for a reaction, it is a little difficult. But if that were a, uh, a male suitor... Like that hasn't happened. You, do you think you would have been able to look at them and look them in the eye? Or are you, are you always No, that I remember uh, Joe Frazier singing to me. That was awkward. I remember Clarence Clemens. That was awkward. <laughs> I think we're just realizing what a hot commodity you are. <laughs> Better late than never. Thank you, Rose. <laughs>